Welcome to Zero Page Homebrew, your best source for the newest Atari games. And this is year five. Hopefully everyone can hear us and it's in sync because I had to tear down all my equipment from doing the... I don't hear us. No, I don't want to hear us either. Yeah, I'm... They have to, I was but worried. we don't have to. I was worried that I was going to have to hear us talking <laughs> oh, in thank delay God. and I was like, no. Oh. No, that's that's a bad thing. Uh, Technical we've issues had to do are that about before. to happen. <laughs> yeah, hefty distortion almost kills me every time. Sorry. Uh, so welcome to Zero Page Homebrew. We have a very big show today. We have two exclusive games. Watch that cap. Oh, he's good. Um, <laughs> we I don't know have. If he's good, but he's uh, currently he's, not misbehaving. <laughs> that's a better term. Uh, we have the exclusive world premiere of. Raptor, you don't even know what it is. No, of it's Raptor, an real world premiere. It's always good. <laughs> of Raptor by Andrew Polly, aka Armscar Coder. Plus, we're gonna have him live on the show to talk about his new game. It has been unreleased. Nobody knows anything about it. I do. It's awesome. Wait till you see it. Uh, and we're also we also have the exclusive final build of Ruby Q, which is a Qbert port by silvio mongo and uh so it's a very uh, exciting show can't wait to talk to andrew Polly about his new game but oh, thank you for subscribing ground trooper um, 39 so, yeah. months i i know i don't even understand that number but <laughs> that's too many months to <laughs> it's way too many i don't it's ugh, so many uh, but we want to thank the Twitch subscribers currently scrolling down the side of Darcy's head. Oh, watch out, Darcy. Uh, 8-Bit Swami, Alnifer, Atari 1974, Atari Age, Big Dog Susie, Brent 31909. Should I say that whole thing? I'll just say Brent. BR Pocock, Buck Owens, Canadian Tenor, Chal... Oh, boy. Charles Don... Donnie Mao. Uh, Charles and Jack, Charles Whelan, Chive 5, Dan AVC, Dr. Moo Cows, Great Offender, Ground Trooper Johnny W, Sir Carl G, Ken Kentuckiana Mike, Kev Kelly, Lauren TDZ, Marco Johannes, Mark Spacing, Metal Atari, Mick Muse, Mike Soul, Mike Motel, Mr. Fix, Muddy Funster, Nathan Strum, Neo Media, or Don Ecro, Packrat, VG Koa, Garcia 70, Render Ghost, Repentless, VG Rich, Six Sweet, Smitty B, Socrates, Spicer, Esmir, The Welshman, Tiki Dan K, Trek MD, X, Ken X, yeah, a lot of new names from uh, the Atari Homebrew Awards, I think, that I have not seen here before. And the people who just resubscribed, Ground Trooper, Drexel, and he was able to get it working today yeah. and announce it. That's yep. pretty good. I uh, only had to, to restart the app to get it to work. Simple as that. Uh, S. Ramirez uh, and Carl G., thank you for resubscribing before the show. Tanya does this much better than Darcy. Does what? Sit there? I don't think he needs to specify. <laughs> <laughs> Just in general. Just in general, Just Dan, you everything. <laughs> um, if you want to support the show, just click subscribe. If you want uh, to make sure you don't miss the show, hit follow. Uh, and um, yeah, speaking of that, followers and all that kind of stuff, we're on year five of zero. Uh oh, now you can't hear it. nothing because uh, there's nothing here. Uh, so we don't even need to have them in. Uh, it's year five of Zero Page Homebrew. Can you believe we've been doing this okay. for four years? I, I believe. But can you believe? I believe it. I believe <laughs> Some it. of these people have been here this long. It's crazy. Yeah. Like Thrust has been here forever watching it. Forever. Forever. Four Grand years. Trooper. All these people there. with high numbers, double digit subscriptions. It's crazy. Um, not only that... Um, you can see the, we have 1200 YouTube subs. You need to correct. You must correct. The data is incorrect. Which data? Which did I mess you up? You did not attain five years. Oh, we didn't. This is. No, he, he is made a mistake. year four. Year five, we've attained yes. four years. Yes. Five just sounded better. I just wanted to say we're on year five. Starting of year five. Oh, it's probably the video game. Because that's the only thing else that's going on. Um, or it could be the Atari Vox. I'm going to mute the video game for now. Just remember, I've muted the video game. So we need to hear it again when we come back in. Let me know if there's still crack crackles. Um, but it is showing that it has uh, audio. Yeah, no tablet today because I lost it on the plane. So I'm using my phone. 
and nobody reported it. So somebody has a new tablet. Is it new? It's older. <laughs> somebody has new to a them. new to them older tablet. <laughs> yeah. It wasn't it wasn't a very high spec tablet. How many tears did you shed? Or did a part of you go mostly that <laughs> it was a very slow tablet and i've been using my phone mostly yeah my monitor at home on my computer it's a 30 inch monitor it's the dell and i've had it for a long time and i love it yeah it has these lines like like and one of like them is like visible lines I, several pixels wide is one of the lines now and it starts to like sometimes the information will be in a corner or on the yeah. side they put it there in your hud or whatever right and it, a part of me is like sad that my monitor is dying and a part of me is like come on monitor just like give up the ghost so i can yeah. get a new one already <laughs> that's what we did with our tv we just got a new tv it didn't die and it has not died for 16 years <laughs> yeah, this 16 is fine. years it's perfectly it's fine perfect <laughs> it's a heat pig though so it just mm. pours out the heat and it was 1080p but an awesome tv and so yeah. i think you could put it right up there <laughs> double tv and in the winter you can use it and it'll keep the room warm. And uh, it was password protected. I don't know what we'd put there. Um, but I wanted to get to, uh, we have 998 Twitch followers. So if you're not following right now, start following. Yeah, come and on. Let's put us over the edge. You can see it on the screen right at there, right around there. Yeah, yeah, right around there, 998. Um, so we're very close to 1,000, which is a nice round number in um, you know decimal. Humans like decimal mm. numbers. Mm -hmm. um, uh, yeah, we had the fourth annual Atari Homebrew Awards. That was the last show that we did. Yeah. Uh, very successful. Lots of fun. Tons. It was very successful, and there were yes. zero technical issues. It, yeah, none. none. Like, don't even look for them, because there were none. Uh, <laughs> it was actually, it went pretty smooth after a while. Uh, but it always starts off a little rocky. But uh, biggest viewers ever. Uh, most awards given ever. <laughs> it was a lot of fun. It, it was. was. It was yeah, really yeah, it was good. Great. It was yeah. great. Yeah. Uh, thousand twenty-four would uh, followers would be a hit. We'll we'll do that too when it gets to thousand twenty-four. <laughs> uh, yeah. Uh, just got back from vacation a couple days ago in Maui. We'll probably talk more about that on Tuesday when Tanya's here because because she was also there. She was there and Darcy <laughs> wasn't. Uh, it would have been. Cool. I haven't even seen the pictures. So uh, yeah, I haven't posted the pictures. I can yet. make stuff up. <laughs> Based on the pictures, yeah. yeah. Oh, that's when we went to the thing in the picture. In the picture, there, there's that. There's some green and brown. Oh, you won't see the number, just one K. Oh, uh, are you sure? Oh, that sucks. Uh, well, oh. we'll see. Actually, you know that might have accurate followers. Depends how Twitch spits out the number. Well, you have 1.2K I mean, subs in YouTube. Yeah, YouTube flips it over to the thousands when you get to yeah. a thousand. But I don't know about Twitch. We'll see. We'll see. Um, we're just going to get um, uh, um, our a guest on the line, Andrew. We're not going to talk to him yet, but we'll just uh, hook that up so we know that it's working. Because we don't have technical issues. Ever. And this is why. It's because we do everything in advance. We think everything That's perfectly right. through, and we do dry run-throughs. So um, he'll be able to hear us, but we won't be able to hear him, and you won't be able to see him. But we just want to get him on the line to make sure it's all good. Um, so we, I do have a package Enough. from Atari Age, but we'll be opening that after because we don't want to delay him too long. Him sitting there waiting, sweating it out. We've calculated the exact right amount of sitting there, sweating it out <laughs> and opening the package would working? put us beyond that. Oh, it is, uh, but he's not, we can't see him on the screen yet. Turn on your camera, please. Oh, oh, there we go. There we are. Good. We can see him. Oh, so we'll just have you already. Yep. It's books. Shh. It's screen. <laughs> I'm pretty sure it's green screen. It's green screen. It's all fake. Fake it's books. Fake books. <laughs> <laughs> um, yeah, that's all the news for now. We'll do more after because we want to get to the get to the guest. Um, so now that we've got him on the screen, let's see. Oh, yeah, that looks good. Now I can put my earpiece in. No cat around? There is a cat. The cat is by the door. I'm sure he will perk up in a bit. So don't do the treat time yet. It's over there. Um, sleeping. We'll don't do the wake after. The baby. Don't wake the baby. <laughs> we'll do the treat time after uh, the interview. He might be just trying to lull us into that. a false sense of... Oh, I saw his ear point towards me. Uh -oh. oh. He's pretending Cats he's asleep, know. so we'll stop paying attention, and then he can chew on a cord. Okay, so... 
You may know this game developer from his amazing, award-winning Atari 2600 game, Dog On It, which was nominated for four Atari Homebrew Awards and won for bo both Best Original Homebrew and Best Original Homebrew Under 4K, 4K and Under. So please welcome to the show Andrew Polly, better known uh, on the Atari Age forums as Armscar Coder. Welcome to the show, Andrew. Welcome. Hey guys. Hey James. Hey Darcy. Hey Andrew. How are you doing today? Uh, it's a beautiful day here in Virginia. So uh, I got to uh, skip out of work today to be with you guys. So that's oh, that makes oh, it a good day. Skip. Shh, don't tell his boss. Don't oh, tell they his know. Boss. They know. Usually when I'm watching at work. I have to minimize it and just listen because everybody's looking over my shoulder. So, <laughs> uh, but today okay, I'm so. at home. So, yeah. Are they Are they watching today at work? Oh no, they the they they. You know, no I, actually, <laughs> I gave them num copy number four of Dog on it because you know it was made for the uh, different people. So they know about Atari, but no, they're busy okay. doing others. It's not a secret at work. No. no, no, no. <laughs> Very cool. Um, yeah, it's a nice day here today as well in Vancouver. Um, so I'm I'm really excited to have you on the show. We haven't we've had you on the show during the awards, but not as a guest. I don't think did we? No. And and you no. know you should have wait made me wait just a little bit longer to let me sweat it out a little bit more. Because <laughs> <laughs> I as soon as I play, what he's saying is our calculations were off. We did not get. Maximum sweat. Maximum. <laughs> <laughs> um, I, I, I wanted to have you on the show today for, for this game because when you sent it to me, I was blown away. I was just like, oh my God, this game is amazing. Uh, Andrew's done it again. <laughs> um, and I don't want to get too much into it, um, but... Um, I, I just want to say congratulations once again on winning the Atari Homebrew Awards for Dog Gone It. Um, that you not only won for Best Original Homebrew Under for 4K and Under, but you won for Best Original Homebrew from a 4K game, which is astounding achievement, especially if going up against the likes of like VHZC, which you did <laughs> going up against him that year. Yeah, uh, I mean, he, that, he's incredible and, you know, unholy. Yeah. Uh, what an amazing game. Yes. There were some great games that year. There were some great games that year, for sure. So what, what do you think resonates with people, uh, with your games, um, considering that they're like 4K and under? Um, and I, I know this one is going to resonate as well. It's just so, so well done. Well, so far, they only know of one. So <laughs> That's true. Um you know, I think Dog on it was unique because it was it had a very special purpose, and I think yeah. it, it was original because of the old adage, uh, "Truth is stranger than fiction." Like I don't think I could have yeah. sat down and made that game up. I had to live it, and then turn it into a game. Um, with Raptor, I yeah. kind of started more with a, a clean sheet of paper, and I had some mm. basic game elements that I wanted in it, and. Um, there was a lot of, okay, that doesn't work, start over, how about this? Uh, that right. looks good, that doesn't look good. Um, so, you know, it it was a year, uh, over a year ago that I started on it. I said I was going to oh, take okay. a break, yeah, yeah. but I ended up starting on it pretty much right after the awards last year. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, it's hard when I guess you have an idea and you're like, I got to get it out of my head. I got to put it on paper and then start programming it. Yeah, and I think, you know, when I did Dalgani, I had no idea because I was learning, you know, assembly code from scratch. I was making a lot of mistakes, um, and you know, this time around, I kind of like, okay, I know what's actually going on here, rather than guessing. I was able to be right, more right. precise and 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 more surgical in, in some things, um, but I really wanted some uh, basic game elements in this one. The first being a boss, like that was top of my list. Uh, okay, started with the boss, okay. Um, yeah, the game had to have a boss. And then I just kind of pulled from a couple of games from my you know, childhood, um, Stampede being one of them. Ironically, I never owned Stampede, but my next-door neighbor did. And every time there was a snow day, I would go over and play Stampede at his house. 
Mm. Um, yep, yep. So you're praying for snow. You're like, snow day again. <laughs> yeah. He, well, he had some good games. <laughs> yeah, yeah. He had uh, Cosmic Arc. Um, That's a good one. Yeah, he had all the third-party games. For whatever reason, I think my parents uh, got me the, the you know regular Atari games. Um, you only get Atari in this household. Yeah. Atari's console, Atari games. No third party. Right. <laughs> but I don't know. I mean, I'm curious to see, you know, what people think of Raptor. Um, I really, like, I want to make this fun. I want to make something to give to everybody and just have a good time. You know, with Doggone It, that was yeah. not the purpose. I'm, I'm glad people thought it was fun. Um, mm. But for this one, it's like. It's more a personal game. It was. It, it still is. And, you know, I. I yep. I see all those people all the time, and and uh, you know, it was a special experience the whole the whole nine yards. So, yeah. but with Raptor, it was all about fun. Played Dog on it, definitely uh, download it and play it, and check out the story in the Atari Age forums behind Dog on it. It's a very interesting story. Yeah. yeah. So, um, yeah. So tell us a little bit about Raptor before we dive into it. Well, I I do want to make a few comments. Um, you know, we can talk more technical and stuff you know, during the stream. But, uh, you know, thanks for having me on the show today. I really appreciate the opportunity to show this game to everybody. Um, Thank you for coming on. I want to admit that I debated delaying the debut of Raptor because of the Russian invasion of Ukraine. Um, as you'll see, um, the, it's a military-themed game where you, the player is flying a quadcopter with the mission to destroy an enemy convoy. So the backstory for the game is it was a simulation program developed in the 1980s for the Raptor, which is a fictitious United States Air Force aerial weapon. So like I said, I started this game over a year ago. It was actually done in December, except for some difficulty tweaks. Um, so I just want to say any similarities in the game to what's going on in Ukraine right now that was not my intent, and you know it's just coincidental. Um, you know, my family and I, we condemn the Russian invasion. We stand with Ukraine for their fight for independence and freedom. We hope and pray for an end to the war and peace to come out, and with the result of a free and democratic Ukraine. So, I think this whole situation has affected the whole world, and I, I hope someday that we can all get to a better place. Mm -hmm. so. So, thank you so uh the idea of raptor where where did the seed come from well i wanted the boss another thing i wanted i wanted something with crosshairs mm. so you know a game that i remember another one i didn't own was space attack now when i go back and look at space attack sometimes it's like well did i really enjoy that game when i was a kid but I really, really, <laughs> really like the idea of the, you having crosshairs. And um, kind of, you know, one of my favorite movies as a kid was The Last Starfighter. So anything with, you know, you, where you can aim and shoot. So I wanted that. Um, I wanted the kind of the stampede element. So, yeah. like I said, I just kind of start with a blank piece of paper. I started with uh, the quadcopter, which actually started as a helicopter, but I didn't like it. And then I, I made it into a quadcopter. And then, you know, just let's try this and see what it looks like. Um, you know, I did, like, start off with, instead of the sprites, they were just blocks. And then I kind of got some things working. Yeah. And I was like, okay, how many can I fit in here? And then I was like, all right, let's see what this looks like. And when I go back and look at some of my early development, they're really kind of funny to look at. <laughs> Uh, they're really like stripped down and you know not many colors yeah. and no sound. Yeah. I do sound at the very so, end. Um, so so game gameplay first and then pretty it up after. Yeah, and, and the whole time I'm like, okay, can I, is there a story that can go with this? Right. And um, and then you know, I get to a certain point. It's like, all right, how much room do I have left? Because um, I you know I, I, sound is my weak point. I don't like it. I, I do it last. <laughs> um, so, I feel, you know, once I get sound, then I can go back and say, all right, how can I make the game better? Once I get something that's playable. So then I try to dive into some of the finer elements, um, which I think I pretty feel, uh, um, I feel pretty good about delivering on some of those. I, I, I think the sprites are the, 
the opponents, if you will, all have some uniqueness to them. Um, yeah. And they, you know, I don't want to say too much. I I, I want you to be yeah. able to sh- you know show it. Yeah. So, so so let's 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 uh, let's load it up. People have waited long enough <laughs> of torturing them. It's like play the game. <laughs> and also, if you do have any questions um, for Andrew, just put in capital letters questions so I, I can see it, and then write out your question. And then I'll be watching the tablet for any questions. And I'm gonna point you at the screen. Yep. So you can see us play uh, in real time. Should be That's good. Um, it's not mirror image, and so it was very confusing at first. <laughs> confusing? Yeah. At our Okay. Ready. One second. Let me get it on the screen. There we go. Is that today? Uh, yes. Okay. Looks like it's in the future. But the future is today. I know. <laughs> Here we go, Raptor. Oh, and somebody didn't remind me. There we go. Now the music. Well, 100% of people didn't remind you. <laughs> All of people, the entirety of humanity didn't remind you. <laughs> so here is Raptor. Uh, you've got the um, name of the game in camouflage. Very cool. The drone, just static there, already looks. <laughs> yes. Did you able to see it, Andrew? Uh, yeah, I can't see the top part, but I can see oh. most of it. There we go. Center it a bit more for you. There we go. Okay. Okay. Darcy's into it. Okay. Uh, shoot everything that comes on the screen. Um. Okay, All right, so I already you, like it because I was able to kill some stuff. Oh, he's already done some stuff, yeah. <laughs> so one and, of the key and it, and it, elements in the game is your laser can overheat if you hold it down yes. too long. And uh, so the best way to play Raptor is, is short to medium left, right? burst. I yeah. approve that level one, the controls are... Uh, Easy enough that Darcy can do them. <laughs> Starts off nice and easy. Um, so there's uh, maybe explain the way you fire your laser and the different things your laser can do. So Darcy sure. can uh, take advantage of that. So pressing the fire button activates the rapid fire laser. Um, the bar on the left indicates the laser temperature. So as you hold the button down, it'll proceed Am I getting really hot? to the right. No. If it gets all the way so to the right, so it'll overheat, and then you'll you won't have it for three seconds. Um, you have two bombs per wave. This is the boss. So when you hear that sound, you, you can hold it down. Yeah, but um, you just watch your watch your. There you go. Now you got it. Sorry, sorry. No, it's okay. <laughs> um, so the best way to fire the laser is like kind of like medium burst, um, because you have two bombs. So to the left oh, of yeah, you just set up a bomb. A boomerang bomb, as I call him. You get that guy, you get a power-up. So with a power-up, now you can uh, hold the laser down, and we'll overheat. Hold it down. Oh, oh, I see. So it's over, yeah. So get that blue thing. Uh... Ah. Uh, well, oh, I, lost my, I lost my target. Yeah, there's a... So, yeah, explain the target. Yeah, so I call that you know, the, the targeting, advanced targeting system in the crosshairs. So, the guy that comes out, it looks like he's got a crown. That's supposed to be an antenna. I call that a jammer. So when the jammer is on the screen, he d- jams your targeting system and it disappears. So to get it back, you either have to shoot him or when he goes off screen. Yeah. And uh, the one carrying the, the blue... Um, oh! Yeah, I call that a plutonium truck. You know, I was kind of, ah! I was kind of proud that I made that up, and then you know, I got on the internet and found out like that already existed. But I stayed, <laughs> I stayed with that. Uh, so, uh, uh, James, I sent you the manual, but basically, this is a simulation for a device, a fictitious, you know, aerial weapon from the '80s that got canceled. Um, 
Yeah. So in the simulation, it says you know it takes place in a desert, and you know there's an enemy convoy that's oh. trying to uh, carry plutonium, you know, nuclear weapon substance, and your mission is just to destroy all enemies. So when you sh destroy the plutonium truck with your laser, you get the power up. But if you right. destroy it with your boomerang bomb, you do not. Okay. And to detonate a boomerang bomb, you just push the fire button Keep twice just really the, fast. Uh... Right. Double click for the plutonium bomb. So you have been using it accidentally? I've... You, uh, no, on totally on purpose. <laughs> <laughs> so I can't see the so bottom of the dead? screen, but you should have gotten a ranking. Oh, it's falling. There we go. Yeah, I can see the bar. Okay, you got a crab, it looks like. <laughs> you got crab ranking. So yeah. there's a predator nope, ranking at the end of the game you based on your score. And, uh... So you got a 177 yep. as your score. So yeah, between 100 and 199 is a crab. Mm -hmm. So we have a question from the audience from uh, Thomas Yanch. Yes, sir. How Question, how complete is the game? I hope it's complete all the way. Um, I don't think I tested this one enough myself. Um, whereas with Dog on it, I played it forever. Um, yeah. I've had some uh, playtesters play it for me. So I'm going to you know, be posting this in the Atari H forums this weekend sometime for everybody to play. And if nobody finds any bugs, I'm saying it's done. Yeah. <laughs> I, I haven't found any, but, you know, you send it out to the masses, yep. there's somebody guaranteed to find something. I thought That's I found a bug, but it, it was the jammer. <laughs> oh, the crosshair's disappearing. Yeah. Yep, yep. I was like, oh no, I found a bug! So, so I find that the best way to shoot is, like, to strafe, so you actually start shooting before you get there. That's what I do, and I go for clumps as well, yeah. clumps of enemies. So if there's two kind of close together, I'll go strafe them, and then I'll let go. So those three in a row, I would go top to bottom. Yeah, yeah up and down is a good motion. A, you do get, yeah, strafing up to down, down to up, and you do get about two seconds of continuous uh, laser. I'm not is sure the, exactly. Yeah, I can't remember. Is the bar... The brown, the bar on the right is how far along the stage you are. Is that correct? Yeah. So that's I, I and that also, was the heat bar. so that's the status bar. So, so on the boss level, it indicates the boss damage. And then when Which you is awesome. when you Thank start you the, for including yeah. boss damage. <laughs> so when you start the convoy, now it's showing you how far into the convoy you are, and it'll progress to the right. Yes. Okay. And, and is the convoy uh, progression based on the number of enemies, or is it a time-based uh, progression? Well, there's... I'm not sure I understand your question, but there's 50 enemies per uh, wave. Is that what you mean? Okay. So it is uh, based on the number yes. of opponents. Then. And, okay. uh, so Rather than, oh, it's two minutes long, no matter how many. What happens if they right. get to the end? Do I lose a life when oh. they get to the end? If yeah, some we... of them make it to the end? Yes. Good question. So the number on the okay. bottom left, um, I call that the escape monitor. You don't really die, but that would be the equivalent of your lives left. If any of the enemies get past you or escape, the escape monitor is decorated once. If the boss is able to retreat, he'll actually go back to the left if you don't kill him. It's decorated twice. And then basically when you get to zero, the simulation is over. And uh, the bo the time the boss is on the screen for, is that a time-based thing then? That is actually a move-based thing. So the movements oh. are random um, based on a, you know, a grid. And I'm just counting how many times he moves. So the okay. time may vary from one to the next depending on where he goes to. Oh. Yeah. Um, so I... When you lose a life, is it the same as overheating? No. no. Overheating like, do, do you lose your gun for a second? Uh, overheating, you lo lose your gun. Um, but when when you uh, lose a life, you don't. No. Um, and if you, oh, so five of them went off the screen uh, during this this wave. Oh, I'm a cat! Better. You made it to cat level. <laughs> That's a fox. <laughs> oh, oh, a fox. Five fox level. Two quadruped. Mammal <laughs> quadruped level. <laughs> um. So. 
you've returned with another 4K game. You did doggone it in 4K, and this is 4K. Astounding amount of fun in 4K. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> um, what draws you to 4K? I don't think I'm smart enough to do bank switching, maybe. <laughs> <laughs> Good answer. <laughs> I think I just need to That's do more research it. before I look into doing a bigger game. Um, ah. I, I I think it's something that on the horizon, but uh, you know I, I do and uh, I'll say enjoy, but it can be frustrating at times. The challenge of fitting it all in, and you kind of go back and I went back more times than I expected to. It was like, hey, I found some more room, or I can do this better. So you go from this, you know, point of like I'm happy with it where the game is, and it's like, oh, I found this. Oh, I can make the game better. And then you add something, and you, that cycle continues and continues. And every once in a while, you you introduce some bugs, and you have to backtrack. But uh, yeah. But yeah, I I was able to put in some you know very subtle things. Um, one thing I like that is hard for people I think to notice it is when your raptor is hovering with no movement. The hover sound is a little less than it is when you're actually flying. Oh, really? That would be very subtle. That's um, good you said it, because some people may not have noticed that. Yeah, usually you notice know, the beginning of the game, before you move, it's kind of, you know, you hear the, the whir of the rotors, and then you move, it's a little bit louder. Uh, like They're the plus ones. I like you know, how they're moving up. I didn't want it to just be... Oh, I really like the plus ones. They're amazing. Yeah. Nice yeah. little touch, and that's that's fairly simple to do. On, a, on an Atari 2600. And it's very, like, modern, too, to, like, have the damage, like, fly up. Yes. From yes, it the is. point that it's done. Yeah, either points or damage, yeah. Yeah, it's really good. Um, so there was something that drew me to this game immediately, and, um, like I said, I had to have you on the show to, to talk about this new game. Um, it really echoes, you know, 2600 games from the, from the 80s, and all, but it has an, a modern homebrew vibe to it as well, uh, with the look and the play of it. Um, so what influences would you say this game has from the 80s, from 2600 games or games in general? I know you, you named a couple. Yeah, so Stampede for sure. Um, yeah. Uh, Space Attack, Crosshairs. And another one I remember playing, I don't remember being very good at it, and I don't remember a lot of details, was Star Raiders. Um, right. For the ranking yeah. system. Fun game. So I wanted a ranking uh... system. I, I I remember playing Star Raiders over and no! over again just to try to get a better <laughs> ranking. So I kind of wanted yeah. that feel of like, hey, can I get to that next ranking level type type thing? Yeah. Um, and it's and it's very cool to achieve that. It's not just it's not just a racing. score, but it's like a patch almost. It's like it's an achievement. It's like I made it just to the next level and you know when i look at doggone it you know i think one of its weaknesses was it wasn't it was kind of slow and long and not very intense mm. with this one i kind of want it to be more of on the edge of your seat quicker it it it, it gets intense really quick after the first couple levels it starts you off oh. slow and lures you in and then it's i'm just... actually confused as to what happens when you get shot because my lives don't seem to go down so oh. yeah your lives only go down when an enemy gets past you and if you don't kill the boss soon enough he will retreat to the left and that'll count as two lives lost and when the boss is shooting what we're calling the sky sweeper it's only the end effector part that bothers you and when the end effector uh, and right now it's on the screen if it touches you you immediately overheat so that's what i thought ha yeah. was happening and yeah. see what's happening now and that is causes you to lose lives because you can't kill the things. And... Right. So what's happening now is that the boss no! of this wave is throwing the sky sweepers at you, and you'll eventually get to him. Mm -hmm. Fox. Uh, well, I have to do the interview. Yeah, that's fine. That's fine. I'm. <laughs> so I, I just don't want to be hogging the game. Oh, play it. You're getting better. The camera is slipped again. I think. Not that it's Not you know oh, massively good, crucial. Actually. Um. So, um, speaking of those, yeah, we have the quad Tari plugged in. That's why it's being naughty. Um, so, uh, speaking of those, the, the symbols, uh, the achievements in the bottom of the screen, um, you mentioned that there might be a patch for this game. Yeah. Are you still doing I'm that? still planning to have a patch. Um, Don't my plan is to, this weekend, put a post in the uh, Atari H forums 
um, hopefully tomorrow, and I'll, I'll detail that, but, um, the manual is done, and, uh, nice. that will also be posted in the forums, um, next, um, Herbie, who was my graphic designer for Dog On It, is gonna be working on the patch, and nice. then we'll be, you know, looking to make, uh, cartridge labels and a box design, but yeah, so, of the Predator rankings, there is Mantis, Crab, Fox, uh, Viper, Lion, and Raptor is the last one. If I got that right. <laughs> right. And Raptor is a thousand points. So anything that is a Raptor ranking, which is a thousand points or more, earns you a patch. And uh, nice. all you gotta do is take a snapshot of your screen, send me a PM on Atari Age, and where to send it to, and when they're ready, I'll send it to you. Nice. And, and a thousand is, is challenging, let's say. I, I have not made a thousand yet. I'm, I'm getting there, but uh, I, I, I believe it's achievable for me <laughs> anyway. But so it's going to be a very uh, decent challenge for a thousand. So I think it's a very good patch score um, that'll uh, give people a lot of play, uh, play time, let's say. <laughs> Well, I hope so, and I hope people have fun, uh, you know, doing it, um, and don't get too frustrated. You know, I will say, um, no, one of the biggest things I learned rockets. during this development was I think what it is, live playtesting. So, I had some people like, playtest the game for me and give me some great rockets. feedback. Um, the status bar was not my idea, that was one of my playtesters' ideas. Great idea. Oh. Great idea. Yeah, great idea. But, I had my brother come over and play the game. And um, it was invaluable to watch him play, not to necessarily see how he did, but to see where he got frustrated and, right. and see how he reacted to things. Because um, people can tell me like, hey, can you do this? Or this would be better. I hear it, but I don't really hear it. But when I saw him, right. um, I was like, wow, okay, I, I kind of get it. Um, so it used to be when you overheated, you didn't start over at zero. You actually started back into the top. So you easily, oh, so you had to wait for the heat to dissipate. Exactly, oh, okay. and you could easily overheat again. And um, my brother, I had played a, games like that, and it's super frustrating. Yeah, he wait, had a few wait, choice wait, words wait. for that. So we we changed. <laughs> that. Um, yeah, very very smart. So it's like cool down to nothing, and then it starts from zero which is right. which is great and very not frustrating yeah it's the same amount of time which is three seconds but then you can actually see the last uh portion of it decorate down to zero yeah. um we have a kind of question it uh splendid that says it looks like there's some ai going on with the speed of the vehicles when the laser is near it looks like they're trying to avoid it oh i wish uh, i appreciate that comment <laughs> but no uh this they're, 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 all the speeds are the same for the type of enemy. So you have uh, the tanks are the slowest, then you have the supply trucks, and then you have the Humvees, which is that one at the bottom right there, Darcy or whoever's playing or shot. Yeah. And then the jammers are the same speed as the supply trucks. And then the uh, uh, plutonium trucks are the same speed as the Humvees. And then the ones he, uh, that Splendid is probably thinking about are the rocket launchers. They go from mm. the speed of a tank to a, a faster speed than any of them. So yeah, it, those that, are the annoying ones. Those are the ones that get me. You have to watch. Now they will slow down at least once on the screen, depending on the the timer. Yeah, those ones they get me almost by like the chain reaction of uh, I'm chasing them down. Yeah, because then it distracts me, and then I just get behind by the time I get them. And Always have to get those scared. first, because yeah. they can zoom off. They could, like, their last zoom could be, like, at the end of the screen, and they'll just take off. Um, so wh where do you have the uh, difficulty switch right now, James? Uh, they're both on BB. Okay. So the bombs... So that's usually the simplest, right? Well, yeah. Oh, it, right. The only difficulty switch setting here is the left switch which is when it's in the B position you have to be stationary to detonate a bomb and I put that in because some of the playtesters were saying they were easily detonating the bombs so I made it more of a conscious decision but if you switch it to the A position you can detonate it while you're, while you're flying 
and again, that's double pressing it really quick. So, yeah. in the B position, there should be less chance of de detonation. Uh, pretty much. Yeah, Darcy's Dar 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 still accidentally activating it, but uh, <laughs> I, I have found it. It is much. That was the first time I activated it on purpose. <laughs> Good job. There you go. So, it, do it does help having, having that option. But it could also help for advanced players putting into the A because oh, yeah. they can detonate it while moving. But it is very sensitive, so um, it's it's good to have that option. How do you know how many bombs you have? I've used them all, I guess. Yep. So you That's get what two per convoy, and they are indicated as blank now beside the lives left for the escape marker, which is set at three right now. Yeah. One. Over. It's oh, game. It's o it game is game over. over. It's overheating too much. Ah, oh, 194. Um, so you've you've used the strengths of the Atari 2600 um, to the best of its abilities here by having all the enemies and players on different horizontal planes and then clearing the board for the boss. Was that a conscious decision? Yeah, and one of the things I wanted was a kind of a continuous experience. So, yeah. you know, instead of flash into a different background to a different setting and the boss just appearing i wanted him to roll on and then roll off if you know if you don't kill him so this is like just yeah. one continuous wave after another um yeah and of course yeah the horizontal movement is easier to deal with um you know at first i had the them going from right to left but then i changed it i found the timing to be a yeah. little bit easier that way <laughs> And uh, left to right is is always indicative in at least Westerners' minds because we read left to right, so it's a progression. And if you watch movies, always uh, the heroes are always moving left to right across the screen. Um, and uh, if you watch like Lord of the Rings, they're always moving left to right oh, wow. throughout the whole journey. So it, even if it was an unconscious decision, that it was it was an appropriate one. For, for the game moving left to right um, and um, and and clearing the board for the boss to move around freely and uh, so you can have that that sprite move everywhere on the screen it's it's really really great and it's it's one of the strengths of the 2600 that you can have just fill the screen top to bottom with things uh, as long as you don't have them on the same horizontal plane. So I see your your crosshair is, I'm guessing, you know, a di a di another player. Yeah, the uh, crosshairs will be player and zero, you. and the sprites are, are player one. Um, you know, one thing that I, you know, worked on early on was how many how many rows of enemies there would be, and then right. you know, if you notice the the raptor doesn't move in the same amount up and down in the sky as your crosshairs do at the bottom. Yes. Yeah. So I yes, kind of played with the balance point. of having enough movement up top, but you know it, it couldn't be equal because then there would be too much sky and not enough enemies. So, um. yeah, it's it's something at f you get over in about five seconds. But at first it's like, oh, that's really interesting. Like the crosshairs, you're moving with the crosshairs. It's almost like the your player character at the top is almost irrelevant until that enemy comes on the screen the sky sweeper. flashing yeah. yellow thing the sky sweeper and then you've got to take into account the placement of your raptor so you've almost you're almost playing two games at once yeah you got you, you gotta, gotta to have some peripheral levels. vision that's for sure <laughs> that's right i mostly watch the bottom but you kind of have to have your eye on the top a little bit oh, yeah oh boy <laughs> this is a quick game <laughs> 10 points and Darcy's dead. Well, one thing um, it is kind of hard to convey, you know, with the 2600 is, you know, the Raptor is moving not up and down, but front to back. And this is a flat battlefield. Uh, um, right. So, you know, it's the like Raptor altitude space. is basically the same the whole time. And the Skysweeper's uh, altitude is the same the same time. It's just kind of going front to back, front to back, front to back. And what may not be clear is on the boss level, you can be in contact with the boss laser portion. It's just the end effector. Because really what's happening is you're in front of the laser when you're below the end effector. Yeah. And, and I was going to talk about the boss next. That um, The concept 
of both the weapon of the boss being an offensive and defensive weapon is genius. Um, because you're trying to shoot the boss, but its weapon is always at the right height where you are. Right. So you can't shoot him when he's shooting you. So he's he has his weapon shooting you, but it's also defensive because you can't shoot him at that time either. Right, um, now, of course, I took the advantage of I'm using the same horizontal position for both. Yeah. Um, which is obviously convenient. And then in the later levels, the boss will actually shoot a sky sweeper and then refire another one. Yeah, pain in the ass. Oh my god. <laughs> Sorry. <laughs> that gets really challenging. But uh, you learn to deal with it. You learn to position yourself in the right place and then attack the boss after. But he's still, if it's, if the boss is moving with the sky sweeper at the same time, you just have to wait it out. You have to wait it out and wait for him to come back yeah. to the left because then yeah. he's more vulnerable. Yeah. It's it's simple but complicated at the same time. It's it's brilliant simplicity that, that makes this game really, really amazing. It's so, so much fun. I can't wait for people to play it. Um, so it so this, oh, I'm sorry. This is... No, go I was going to say, one thing that makes the Sky Sweeper really annoying um, is that it moves the same speed as the Humvee. So, like, that Humvee right there is at the same position. Oh. No, you had the power up, so it didn't matter so much. Luckily. So that's when you really got to pay attention. You got to wait for the Sky Sweeper to go, like, you know, further away or closer and then sweep in there to kill that one Humvee. The other right. ones, like the tanks and the other ones that move at different speeds, you can kind of wait and it becomes kind of more of a, like a puzzle game to say, oh, well, which one should I shoot first? And that yeah, there's a there's a payoff and like you have to figure out like what is my strategy here? Well, there's fast moving vehicles, there's slow moving vehicles. Oh. Then there's the power up you can get. Should I get the power up first and then go after the vehicles? It's it's not straightforward. Oh, I just do this, 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 this. Yep. And it becomes a little bit more tricky once you get to the shields. Uh, yeah. Yeah. Oh, Smitty B put it perfectly. Easy to learn, hard to master. Yeah. Um, you know, the rules are there. Th that, that's said, but, you know, I, there's people out there that took Dog on it to a level I never thought. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. And uh, oh, I, yeah. I, I highly suspect that there's going to be people that shred this game. Oh, for sure. Somebody's just got their mindset perfect for this. Oh, so Darcy's has made it to a new level. Yep. Let's talk about these. So these are protective shields, so when the enemies are behind the shields, you cannot Nobody shoot Nobody likes protective shields. <laughs> <laughs> and, uh... Yeah. So when they are behind the shields, you cannot... Your, your laser cannot penetrate the shield. And what can happen is, if they're partially behind the shield, but your laser hits them, you can still destroy them. The only time you can penetrate the shield is when you have a power-up. And then the shields will change and get bigger after each successive wave. Yeah, and change positions too. Yeah, at one point they'll alternate. Mm -hmm. Which is, oh, oh boy. But they don't cover the whole screen. There's little tiny slices. I had to leave some hope. <laughs> yes, thank you so much. Without those, it'd be like, oh my god. Pain, the pain. Um, so what's started this game was it uh some people start the ideas of a game from a technical perspective is like oh i can do this with the atari which will oh i can make a game out of that or they come up from it from an idea perspective or a design perspective so what what um kind of was the seed for that was it an idea or was it a technical thing that uh, I would started. say it was an idea. I wanted to do something different than Dog on it. Um, yeah. And I had this idea for, like, hey, I want to shoot something with crosshairs. Um, and, you know, I, for some reason I had something flying in my mind. Um, I started thinking about this actually, I guess, the fall of uh, 2020. And um, I didn't really start working on it until February of 21. And, um,. Yeah. But then I was like, okay, I got this idea, what do I do next? And, you know, I was like, okay, do I go horizontal or vertical? Well, that was pretty easy. Uh, everybody yeah, be yeah. Cool. <laughs> oh. And then at the same time, I was like, okay, I want some kind of story or some kind of theme here. I just don't want random things like, hey, what's that? Um, 
So it was going to be a military style game from the get go. But I really didn't know, but it was like, okay, let's see what I can do. So my original quadcopter was actually a helicopter. I used both sprites. So it looked more like a, uh, like a Blackhawk helicopter. It was long and lean. But mm, okay. it took up too much. I mean, using both sprites for that was, I mean, both players was uh, too much. So I went back to the quadcopter, which is one sprite from one player. The quadcopter looks really good. Like, it looks like what it is. So you have, actually have an extra player character up in the top, then. Did you use both player characters of where the copter is? Only on the boss level. So the oh, Sky yeah. Sweeper, before it's launched on the boss level, is player one. And after it's launched, it's the ball. So it's player one. Okay. So when you refire, right, you see the ball and the player one there. On the enemy level, no. Uh, well, uh, no, it's the ball on the enemy level too. I think I can't remember. Okay. To be honest with you. <laughs> I mean, what I kind of found was like life. once I got something working, and you know, I was like, okay, move on to the next thing. <laughs> um, so I I got an extra life. What uh, what uh, scores do you need for extra lives? So every two hundred points, your your escape monitor is incremented, which gives you another life, and that is true up until you have nine lives and then you can't get more than nine but the way it kind of ended out um not necessarily on purpose is by the time you get to needing 10 you would have a thousand points anyway right yeah so you're doing pretty good <laughs> let's try and get to the alternating shield levels so the shields are you know applied to the boss as well your laser cannot uh, penetrate the shields. <clears throat> and does the smart bomb ignore the shields? I can't. I, I can't. Well, the smart bombs are ineffective against the boss, so you get bonus points if you don't use them at the end of the convoy level. Oh. So if you don't okay. use them, you get ten points per bomb. But then you you're restocked so, at the beginning of the next convoy. And ten points is like ten tanks. is a lot of points. Yeah. Because that is the only differentiation between somebody playing the game. Um, because there's the exact number of same number of enemies every wave, and the same. And because there's no like uh, bonus for killing things close to the one edge or whatever. Right. Yeah. So but that gives you a bonus, like to like perfect it. Yeah. I actually so, found this level one of the harder ones because once you kind of get on the right side, it's hard to get back on the left side. Yes, yeah, it's quite a trek back, right? So, and the boss is protected now. Oh, oh stop it! Oh. There we go. <laughs> like the boss doesn't have super defenses, it it because it's it's fairly easy on the early levels, but once you get up here, he's very protected by the. Uh, by the shields. Yeah, so it and makes you know, it very uh, difficult. I'm calling him a forward command vehicle. Um, so he's kind of just directing the convoy. But yeah, the shields really make it painful when the randomness is not going your way. Ugh, yeah. And you can shoot when you've got the power up. You can shoot through, through the, the pink, yep. uh, shields, which is very nice. <laughs> yeah, it's a nice, it's a nice additional bonus. And the power up is random. So I think you're you were telling me like you could get zero, you could get four of them. Yeah, so I'm just generating a random number and the then looking at the a, a table to select an enemy. So that was really the last part of the difficulty that was hard to nail down. Because um, sometimes I play games where I've had four plutonium trucks in a wave, and I did have my first one yep. with, with zero. Uh, but normally you have two to three and at least one. Uh, now, when you get to the later levels, I reduce the chances of the plutonium truck. So, um, I think when you, I can't remember the wave number, but when you're around 700 points, the chance of it appearing goes down. Mm. Yeah, because you don't want too many as, as it goes up. You need something to uh, make it difficult. Oh, when you're overheated, you can use your, yes. your bomb. You absolutely can. Which is... Very nice. Yeah, and you know, bombs obviously is something you want to save. Um, 
not only for the points, but if you use them too early in the wave, when you overheat. You don't have them for this stupid missile truck. <laughs> <laughs> yes, that missile truck is the worst. Yeah. Also, I got the blue, I got the plutonium right before a boss fight once. Oh yeah, I was going to ask about that. And it seemed to persist into the boss fight. It does. So I think I... Yes, it does. If you're oh. fortunate enough, if you kill the blue tame truck with your laser, not the blue uh, bomb, it will. It's the same amount of time applies, and then the, when the boss rolls on, you can shoot him, and and be protected, um, for you know that little bit of time. Uh, when the boss is sideways, is there enough room to shoot the edge of him without getting hit by the mm, sky sweeper? No, not really. It almost looks like it. Um, but the what the collision detection is doing is you know looking at the collision of the end effector, which alternates between a big you know size and a little size. So yes, right. but only for like two frames. Okay. Using up all my smart bombs, but you know keeping me alive. Ah! Don't have any left. No. Yeah, this is when it gets bad. <laughs> yeah, yeah, it's like it ends uh, quick. Yeah, it does. Or, when or it's, can end when quick. it's in your time, it's, it's over. Yeah. yeah, I mean the the key is simple: is don't overheat. Yeah, and, yeah. And sometimes, and when you, when you, oh, oh, sometimes and when you overheat, go on. I was saying, sometimes it's better like just let one go, rather than risk yeah. overheating yeah. and then losing a bunch. That's that's the lesson ah. I think. Yeah. I just because did it. Yeah. it's like, it's a chain reaction. You overheat mostly because you're <laughs> in a panic state. Yeah, you and cannot the panic. panic. State is when things are getting close to the end, and then it's, it's just like, <laughs> boom, 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 boom. It just gets worse and worse. And when they're near the end and you overheat, it's, it's, it's sad times. And other than the rocket truck at its fastest speed, you are faster than anything on the battlefield. Mm -hmm. So sometimes you can, like, let one go and then go back and get it later. I mean, when yeah, I say later, right. I, when I say later, like a few seconds a later. Because when you have the alternating shields, like, you know that it's going to alternate. And you might say, alright, I know by the time he, you know, this enemy gets to this position, I won't be able to shoot him, so I'm going to go shoot this other one first. I try to keep things predictable. There are some random things, so, like, how the shields alternate, it's not, you know, really quick this time and long this time. It's very predictable. So you can kind of, like, get into... A Puzzle mode of when to go where. Um, the enemy speeds are very predictable and the same. Hold on. Oh, ah. Really pulling it out there. I know. Ah. All right. So the the rocket trucks are oh the God. reason that they go faster is it because they have a rocket on them? <laughs> if that's what you want to believe. Rocket propelled. Go for it. I, you know, that was a late change, um, because they were the same speed as the Humvees, and I was like, you know what, they, I was trying to give each one, like, their own uniqueness, I mean, the tanks go slow, um, yeah. you know, the jammers do their thing, the plutonium trucks, so I was like, I, I need to mix it up, and kind of just add a new level of difficulty there, so I, I played the around with it. The rockets make the game. And made yeah. it the rockets. Yeah. 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 Without them, it would be like, uh, maybe a little bit too easy? Right, and it, is, it kind of gives you that old crap feeling when they come on the screen. Damn it. Oh, you lose. If the boss yes. gets off the screen, you you lose it. Um, so you got, you're, you uh, lose point. you got a lion. Lion. Yep, 713. I, I usually tap out at around 700 something. It gets really, really challenging around that line. Yeah, so by yeah. this time, the shields stay the same. And I think it was a wave or two before this, the skyscraper's uh, movement, instead of going constantly up and down or front to back, it's more random. And, yeah. um, but, so you've got a couple waves there where you have to tough it out. But the plutonium truck chances will go down a little bit. Yeah. Um, so this game is going to be part of the High Score Club, Vicelli's High Score Club, coming up possibly this weekend, he said. Uh, depends on the release of the game, I'm guessing. Uh, yeah, I think he's posting this. that tomorrow. Um, I've already sent him the okay. binary, so that's, that's a go. Um, oh, good, okay. So yeah, that should be coming out tomorrow, I think. Uh, 
I think somebody had a question in the chat about a PAL version of the game. Are you planning a PAL version? I have a PAL 60 version. Okay, good. Yeah, excellent. Um, and I'm leave out our European friends. Yeah, and you know, I, I struggle with that sometimes, and I chose some colors, you know, that maybe don't convert so well. But I have a friend in Australia who uh, gave me some good feedback, and I think I've got it dialed in pretty good. Um, Excellent. But yeah, that will be posted. I'm have I'm having some car problems I have to deal with tomorrow, but I'm hoping to get that post made in the Car H forum tomorrow with both binaries and the manual. Excellent. Yeah, the manual is great. We'll take a look at it after you're gone because I can't do both oh, of those things sure. at the same time. My screens aren't set up for that. Uh, let's see. Oh, how hard is it to get to 9,999 points? Oh, that's a good question. Does it cap out? It does. Difficult. But I'm telling you, yeah. if anybody finds a bug, <laughs> that is the first thing to go. Because <laughs> I am mashed yeah. out on ROM. I mean, I, every every byte is used. I have, I think, three or four bytes of RAM left. But okay. when you get to a thousand, I do increase the difficulty. There's a a timer that's randomly assigned to uh, how long it takes before each enemy is launched. So, uh, uh, where you're playing now, it's anywhere between you know one and two hundred fifty-five. But I basically shorten that up. So, once you get to a thousand, they all start coming out, not fast, but sooner, <laughs> and it gets really crazy. I would right. applaud anybody that gets to nine thousand nine hundred ninety-nine. But if you do, it will stop at nine thousand nine hundred ninety-nine, and you can keep playing. Okay. Please so send me a picture of that if you do that. That would be great. <laughs> yeah, that's that's a good challenge, and I maybe somebody's up for that, but uh, it gets it gets challenging. But I can see somebody breaking a thousand during the high score club. Uh, oh, challenge! I think sure. those guys. There's some talent. Oh, yeah, they they are going to shred it. I, I've seen what they can do. They they are professionals. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. yeah. Let's see it, S. Ramirez. You can do it. <laughs> Um, I think that's all the questions, unless somebody has a uh, last uh, question to pop in. Don't see any other ones. Um, so thank you so much, Andrew. Is there anything else you'd like to add about the game or um, the release? Or are are you planning a boxed uh, release? I don't know if you covered that. I did not, and my plan at the moment is not to publish this myself. That was a um, painful endeavor. You know, <laughs> yeah. Albert does not get enough credit for what he does, and everybody knows that, but I lived it. Um, yeah. <laughs> so, you it's know, a lot of work. If somebody right? wants to pick it up and publish it, I'm more than happy to let that happen. Um, but yeah. we'll, I, I want to develop the manual so everybody can at least have it, you know, electronically. And the next is right. a patch. Um, right. and then, um, I think we'll go ahead and just I mean, design a box and the cartridge labels just in case. Right. The alternative route is to, if, if you don't, um, make a, a physical version of it, you can ha have a label ready for people that they can make their own through Atari age. Oh, absolutely. That That is the case. Yeah. If, if, if this does not go to a full physical release, I'll make it available to make for people to make custom uh, cartridges through Atari age. That's awesome. Yeah. yeah, I mean, I want people to have fun. And, you know, um, I've played it like a million times. I'm like, is this still fun? I'm not sure. <laughs> <laughs> so how far can you actually, how far can you get on, on your own game? At this point, can you make it a thousand? Yeah, I hate to say it, but I'm pretty good. <laughs> <laughs> uh, so you can earn your own patch, because I know some people have said I'm not good at my own game, uh, uh, but when they're talking about their own games. Yeah, I, well, that, you know, when I played Dog on it, I'll be honest with you, it's like I'm, you know, I'm pretty good. But when the high score club got a hold of it, you know, those there's some guys over there that I'll never get to. Um, <laughs> but one of the elements, you know, that kind of developed as we went here is it gets harder at the end but at a certain point it does mature and i wanted to have the ability for people like you know bocelli's uh high school club if they want to grind it out for a while go for it um but i i i've changed the difficulty several times but on this version 
I think I played last night and I got like 1200. You kind of like you have to just keep focused because as soon as as soon as you overheat, it it it's oh. It is because there's so many get by and then you run out of bombs and then you're just waiting for the yeah. vehicles to go off screen and, and you're done. Yeah, because yeah, once you get to a thousand, it's funny because it's actually less advantageous to use a bomb because what happens is they all launch at the same time right at you <laughs> that's true and they're all going different speeds which is smart so they're not just all in a row and you can't just go zoop, zoop right get the, yeah well that's uh that's great so it's super fun game um everybody go out and download it when uh, after you uh post it on the weekend and uh we'll play it a little bit longer here and i'll try and get past at least 800. <laughs> See how far I can get. You can so do I can concentrate it. Fully on it. I know I can. I, I believe in myself. I think I once you, you concentrate and stop talking to me, you'll be able to do it. Yeah, I think I'm just distracted. That's that's what I'll blame. <laughs> um, so thanks for hanging out uh, oh, with us today. My pleasure. Uh, it was a blast. And uh, I'm looking forward to everybody playing your new game, Raptor. Yeah, and like I said, um, you know, welcome comments and feedback. And if you find a bug or you know, think it's a bug, let me know. Cause I, I want to get to the point where I can call it done for sure, and um, yeah. move on to the next thing. Yeah, you bet. Oh yeah, looking forward to your next game. This this is a, a killer game. It's so amazing. So we will uh, talk with you soon. All right. See you guys. See you, Darcy. Thanks, See you, James. See ya. Bye bye. Go. You know it's the it's really uh, choppy the output of the game on the computer. Because I had to reconfigure all the reconfigure the computer here for after the uh, Atari Homebrew Awards, so it does work perfectly with an interview and I think I saw that Andrew wasn't chopping up. Um, but the game is and it still is a little choppy. Um, so I have to reconfigure this and uh, make sure that doesn't happen. But it's, yeah, it's still, still chopping around, I can see it. Though. Well, thanks, Dan. Uh, John Kilatari, I missed some of the interview. What are the pink bands on the screen? Uh, those are protective shields for the enemy. You cannot shoot them through that. But you can use your smart bombs to uh, destroy the enemies uh, in that. But you just can't shoot through them. So it protects them as they go through. And this is the first wave of the protective. Uh, but when you get this power oh, this up, second. Oh, okay. But uh, when you get this power up, you can shoot through it, which is which is great. Uh, the D train thirty-seven. Is this an unscheduled episode? That's not oh. your catchphrase, the D-Train. Your catchphrase is, what did I miss? <laughs> I'm late. What did I miss? <laughs> oh, no, it's not an unscheduled. This was definitely scheduled far ahead of time um, for our return back for our fifth year of Zero Page Homebrew. Um, so how are you liking the game? Super fun? Yeah. Oh, uh, you got hit. Oh, no. Hit. Uh-oh. Oh, it's treat time. Oh, oh, oh. Okay, now I'm feeling uh, thrusts pain. Let me trigger that again. <laughs> because that was very loud in my ear. <laughs> yeah, it was... Well, they didn't hear it because I had it muted. I could hear it. I heard it for everybody. I'm going to trigger it again, though. Let's see. No, that's not the right. Yeah, you'll get it. Oh, no! Okay. It's tree time. Yum, 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 yum. Oh, that's still too loud. Oh, my. But he heard it. He must have heard it through his bite. He did. Because it's really loud in my headset. So <laughs> He heard it through your ear and out. Well, I've got the other ear. Yeah, you want some treats? Who gave the kitty some treats? The telco! Oh, oh where are his treats? Oh, no. they're upstairs. No. Ah. Go get your treats. One second. One second. No, out of the way, James. <laughs> Go get your treats. Oh, game over. Still 469. That's like okay. I'm a snake. I don't know how I feel about that. <laughs> how do you feel about that? How do, would you feel about being a snake? Well, you'll get a chance to find out when you get the game. No 
chat. Yep, just gotta ring the bell. Where's the bell? Right there. Oh, here she is. Ring the bell. Ring the bell. Oh, it's low on power. No. Ring the bell. Very smart slash very stupid creature. Oh, he's smart. Yeah, go buddy. He knows how to ring a bell. Oh, Nobody's sorry. impressed when I ring a bell. <laughs> <laughs> That's true. Oh, come on. Sit. There we go. Double portion, please. One from now, one for the awards. Uh, Atari would agree with you. That's for sure. There we go. Okay, let's play. We know you can hear the bell because it's what alerts you to... Uh... Three more, little monster. Three more? See? Oh, in your hand. Okay, so let's turn this up a bit. And reset. Because <laughs> I missed it. I want to hear the raptor sounds. One more. Meryl. 23 points. Okay. Yeah, it gets louder when you move. Yeah. Thank you. Can you bring that bell again? I'll give you more snacks. <laughs> <laughs> he has to wait an hour. Whole hour. Actually, if you want to put on the chat yeah, I on the uh, computer, go to Chrome. You don't need that. <laughs> ah! Distracted again. Pause that. Pause it. And then it's in the little um, little gear icon. There's actually a direct link if you just type type start typing Twitch TV in the in the bar. You go to the top bar and just type Twitch TV. Do it. No. This bar? No, not that bar. The, the search bar. bar. Yeah. Type Twitch and it'll autofill and want to say uh, pop up player or something. Just click that one. There we go. And that'll be the chat. Then. know how to do it in the future but it helps me now <laughs> it's all in the it's all in the uh gear icon if you could change it in the gear icon to dark mode that would be super super awesome because so much better in dark mode everything needs dark mode all the time thank you sweet I don't always feel that way no it's too bright Plus it saves energy on um, yeah, the LEDs. The LEDs. And potentially other devices. But we, we don't have any of those other devices, so. Not. Ah! Uh, ran into it immediately. Yeah, the um the boss has very little shields. But his offensive weapon is what keeps him going. It takes maybe a second and a half of continuous fire on him. Yeah, yeah. I mean, I like that. Some people might want him to get tougher as time goes on, but I like that yeah. it's the other environment, the other factors that make it hard. Yeah. There are many factors. 
And I like weapon. how long the blue uh, plutonium uh, power lasts. <laughs> it lasts a, nice a decent amount, amount of time. It's, yeah. it's, it's not like forever, but it's not like, oh, you get two seconds into the thing. It's like, no, it's going. It's still going. <laughs> it's and, still going. Uh, I, just, I like it. It's a good amount. And even though... Oh, those guys. I hate them so much. And Wait. even though it's not a big <coughs> pain... Uh, so had it for a sec. A whole half second, yeah. That's all you need. The radar jammers. Yeah. Even though it's not that big a deal, because you can see your yeah. aiming, see it is shooting. a big deal. Yeah, because you have to be shooting to see it. Yeah, and then you overheat. Like, I can't see it, I have to shoot. Yeah. And then, which wastes... Oh, no! That is the worst! Oh, I've got my power up. Sometimes the power-ups you get just, like, train you to give you bad habits. <laughs> they do. Boom. Boom. Ah! Come here! No, give me that! What? You don't have to dodge it when you have the power-up. That's true. But, again, that gives you bad habits. It but, does. But... Ultimately, the best habit is to learn to act differently when you have the blue. Yes, and to, and to realize this is a different state, uh, and it's a little more, uh, a little more, a little more time learning. Oh no! That's when you use it. Yep, is when somebody's about to go off the screen. So in these levels where uh, the sky sweeper is, uh, you can't stay on the complete left because it'll come out at. Uh, uh, you don't know where it's coming out. You have seven lives now. Nice. Oh, 400. That's the first. When you get the second. Uh, yeah, the, the rocket trucks tricked me at first because I thought they only raced out. I didn't realize they raced out. Twice. Oh yes, yeah, that's the problem. And they can only race twice because by then they're gone. <laughs> <laughs> yes, they don't have enough room left. Not. There we go. You're dead. Ah! Oh, you bastard. It's it depend depending on when you get shot. It's not if you get shot immediately. It's this is the thing I've been deal. noticing is that it's worth it to stay there until you get shot because once he hits you. Yeah. If he hits you right away, he's going to have his blaster out for a while, and it takes a while for the thing to cool down, but it's a similar amount of time as the thing. So it you is. don't really have to worry about being um, shot at the right at the beginning. Yeah. Of, yeah. And so it, it makes sense, and I haven't uh, completely... Oh, no, no, no! Yeah, there's, there's strategies. Gotta watch out for it. It's a really well balanced game. Yeah. In terms of everything that's happening on the screen. No, no! <laughs> <laughs> you, that was the worst. Good. No! <laughs> oh my god, he was. He timed in himself perfectly. To it's be almost slow. like he didn't want to be blown up. I know. Wait, so he's slow in the protective time mm -hmm. and fast when he's. Available to be hit. Come on. No, 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 no. Just not hearing any issues. Cracks are back. Cracks, Cracks are back. But uh, somebody else says. Not hearing. So stress is probably. <laughs> could be. It could be a combo otherwise. problem, right? Like it could be. Oh, you bastard. You oh. gotta get ahead. Ah! When, when that happens and he's in the bar, you have to go to where he's going to be. Yep. Get ahead of him. This... Mm. That. There you go. Fine. <laughs> Good time to have that happen. 
So it's always good to stay to the left of the boss because his bullet drifts yeah, to, off to the right. To the right. Yeah, yeah. Opening. Yes. The plutonium. Oh, thank you. Oh, God. No, no, no. Just keep bringing out those blue guys. No. Head, head, head. Like to the complete right? Yeah, like, yeah. yeah, ahead of him and then, and then, yeah. Because the complete right is open. Yeah, yeah. and the, the, if you can figure out where the gap is, like map it to the, uh, that hill there. Because it's near the peak of the two second hills. What is it? The, the index finger and the, 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 this finger. Whatever this is. <laughs> that finger. Because there's five hills. Oh, yeah, yeah. Yeah, it's at the... But it's really narrow. Right away, I have to use it. This is when, this is the level yeah. that I have trouble with. I don't know why, because I don't think it's that much different than the last one. It's not that it's more painful f to lose uh, points to a rocket truck. It's that they're the ones you almost... No. They're almost always the ones you lose points to. Yep, because <laughs> they zoom ahead. Yeah. yeah. Oh, my God. No bombs? No. I get that blue thing. Just sacrifice a couple guys to get that blue thing. Oh, am I going to break 800? Uh, I still have to rock. This guy's only worth 25. And last time you died on this guy. I did. Oh, was it this guy? Him. Yeah. No. It was I this guy or the seven, one before? I only got seven, seven it was the one before, because oh, I only okay. got 715 last time. But what, what I oh, meant... Oh, you bastard. You bastard! You stuffed one of my bombs right away. Timing! The timing! Well, you're over 800, so you, you uh, achieved, achieved your goal. Yeah. Come on. Oh! Oh, you... No, it's over. 806. Oh, boy. With a, without a back background, this play field looks great. Uh, pink shields make it desirable to prioritize getting the blue power up. Yeah. yeah. Oh yeah. yeah so as soon as that sure. blue comes on the screen, you've got to like, nah. get it. So let's take a look at the manual. Um, just so we know the names of all these things again. Uh, um, I know that Andrew said all the names, but completely forgot them immediately. Um, so there is the front of it. I was instructed to pass this on to you. I was. It was discovered in the abandoned warehouse outside of Langley. That is all I know, Big Al. Raptor. Rapid Aerial Precise Targeting Optical Repeater. Uh, from 1984, version 1. Oh, that's pretty small. Um, if we can just make that a little bit bigger. Hello. Uh, you're switching between 49 and... Oh, that's... Yeah. It's because it uh, shrinks. Fit. Mm, yeah. It's already fitting width. That's why it's not working. Yeah. So it's at 49. Do 100. So let's do 100. Yeah. yeah. Raptor program cancelled. Cost and technical reasons. We won't go through everything. Uh, simulation scenarios. So this is a simulation. Um, so you have the Raptor, your advanced targeting system, 
your simulation score and escape monitor, which uh, um, monitors how many vehicles you can let escape. And then there's those two um, smart bombs. Uh, simulation starts with five allowable enemy escapes indicated by the escape monitor. If a forward command vehicle is allowed to retreat, the escape monitor is decremented twice. Oh, oh it's not just once. It is twice. Uh, once the escape monitor reaches zero, as a tester, anything around a thousand points is achievement. Yeah. Oh my God. <laughs> yeah. So you've got the tank, supply truck, Humvee, jammer, supply blue, truck, okay. plutonium, and rocket launcher. Uh, when a jammer is on the play field, the Raptor's advanced targeting system is disabled. Yes. Storing a plutonium truck with the Raptor laser activates a power boost. See section five. A rocket launcher varies its speed between fast and slow. Oh, they're the worst. <laughs> Skysweeper, forward command vehicle, forward command vehicle damage. I, I rarely look at how far through a level I am or the damage of the enemy, um, but it is very cool to see that on the screen. It's a nice, nice indicator. Because you're just so busy dealing with everything else on the screen. Um, are you missing left pages? No, no, we go in one, one at a time. Yeah, page three, page four, it's only five pages. Um, so, power boost. Plutonium truck is destroyed, but the Raptor laser temporary power boost is activated. Power boost is not activated when the plutonium truck is destroyed by a boomerang bomb, which is always the worst. Yeah, the, the manual looks so nice. Yeah, yeah. It's right Solid. in line. Like, look at the the ring binding on there. Yeah. Uh, uh, during the power boost, a Raptor targeting system and laser will turn blue, and the laser bar will indicate the bound of power boost time remaining. Cracks are back. Hmm... Well, I'll figure that out. Oh, no, no, no. No, 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 no. Okay. Bye bye. Uh, so here is enemy protective shields in pink. Uh, very nice contrasting color. Um, they're very visible. <laughs> During a power boost, the skyscraper does not overheat the laser. Power boost time remaining. That is very helpful. I do watch that a lot. Uh, um, is it blue? Yep. Okay. Yeah, because it's blue. Blue, blue. Um, it's the same color as the laser. And there's the back of it. Programming graphics, Andrew Polly, game logo, and manual design, Herbie Holler. Copyright 2022, arm scar coder. And then he has this awesome symbol of his arm and the big scar that he got on his arm. Ah. Uh -huh. I like the weathered archive look of the cover. Yeah, it's also damaged around the edges. It's a paper clip there, which holds nothing. Well, you don't know what it doesn't hold. Because <laughs> that's... Would the, hold it holds back. something on the inside. Ah, why did you mention cracks? Now I notice them. Oh, I can see it's the video game. I'm going to... Because I can see a little line indicating there's uh, noise coming from it. Hmm. I'll have to go through everything, make sure it's all good. Like I said, I reset up this whole thing from the Atari Homebrew Awards, but I was away in Maui for a week and a bit. So I still have to sort some things out. Get there were the some gremlins pauses. Out. Yep, get all those gremlins out. So super awesome game. Going to be released this weekend, probably tomorrow, Saturday. Definitely give it a download. Um, lots of fun. Just reminds me of old school... Um, like Activision games. Um, I I said when I was talking with him, Laser Blast, um, because in La Laser Blast, you're a, a spaceship at the top shooting down lasers, and that has a very similar look with your laser. Mm -hmm. And also Stampede, where everything's going across the screen, except you're not a cowboy with a lasso. You're shooting them with your laser. Um, when Where do we get this game? Atari Age Forums. Um, so check there. Just search for Raptor. Um, tomorrow. Um, probably they're in Atari 2600 or Atari 2600 programming is usually where all the developers post their their games in the programming subform. Atari 2600. Um, so let's go to opening my box that I got. Mail time! 
I already opened it. Sorry. <laughs> I know what it is. It's from Atari Age. Um, these are some I was stuff. Just checking to see if your address was showing. Oh, I blanked it out. I blanked it out. <laughs> nobody, nobody gets to find out. Um, so these are some of the games that I I was reminded of Laser Blast 2, but this is likely more. Oh, Laser Blast is is tedium. It's so. It's the same thing forever. Uh, Three guys at the bottom. You're at the top. You go shoot, shoot, shoot. Next wave. Shoot, shoot, shoot. Next wave. That's the game. <laughs> That's the whole game. I mean, they shoot you too, but that is it. That There's no variation. And it takes forever to get the patch. That's going to be my last game that I try and get a patch on for Activision. It is torturous. <laughs> Let's see what games that I bought. Some of these I've been waiting a long time to order because they go out of stock right, right. a lot. Um, or they didn't have boxes uh, at the time. Oh my god. When you order from Atari Age, it comes well wrapped. Nice. Never had anything uh, damaged come from Atari Age. Really good wrapping. Almost there. Almost there. Oh, no, not. <laughs> Darcy's helping. I'm helping. I'm reducing the amount of space it takes up in the <laughs> landfill. Okay, okay, okay. <laughs> there we go. Okay. Package number one. wonder if the color of the packaging is intentional. Blue? Mm, I don't know. Uh, got Starfire from Emmanuel Arot Star. I always want to say rock star, but it's rot, rot ah. scar. Um, super fun game. Um, very much like uh, Star Wars, the <clears throat> arcade game. Um, I have not got my patch in this. Uh, it's very difficult to get the patch. I got close ish, so I did buy it because I do enjoy the game. And it's always fun to actually own the game to get the patch. Yeah. Um, Super good game. No, I'm buying terrible games. <laughs> uh, I will mispronounce this. Uh, Chettery. Uh, it is uh, um, Tetris for the 2600. Uh. Um, it's a um, very good version of Tetris. It's got a great cover. Very nice. Um, and it's got uh, great music as well. And the emulators weren't able to emulate this for the longest time i think they've been able to uh, emulate it yes and the uh, title screen music and the title screen itself is very good uh thomas Yanch did some programming on this it just says additional programming so you can fill in what exactly he programmed in this just <laughs> as additional um yeah really good um game let's Go through these first, so I don't have to torture you just yet with unwrapping another one. I got the Jaguar GD, Jaguar Game Drive. There. So this is an SD card based um, multi-cart uh -huh. for the Jaguar, which somebody is sending me a loaner Jaguar. Uh, so yes. I can play some of the games that I got last Atari Age Day and for this upcoming Atari Age Day as well. Um, so that's really, really cool. And it can even emulate CD-based Atari Jaguar because it's Atari Jaguar to CD add-on. So. Is that, like, not normally easy to do? Um, I don't know. Huh. I'm not sure. But it has that option, which is good. Uh, Hunchy 2. Great platforming game. Um, I wanted to wait till I got the cartridge of Hunchy 2 uh, before I played it again on the show in an After Dark. Um, but looking forward to playing that. I love platformers. Uh, 2600 mini game multi cart. This has a number of. <laughs> We're old. We have to go like this. It was uh, the glare, <laughs> and I was changing oh. the angle so I could see past it. Oh. <laughs> I'm not old. Uh, we're not old. Uh, uh, so this has a number of awesome m mini games on it. I can't remember which ones right now off the top of my head. Somebody can fill in that. Sprite tracing was front to code. Oh, did you did, did the title screen? I love the title screen because it does the outline of um, 
the title of the game, uh, which is Star Fire, like Star Wars, you know, in the arcade oh, yeah, where yeah. those outlines. Really well done. So awesome job. Thomas. The manuals for the games, packed separately. While packing, packing peanuts. Atari loves to eat these. Yeah, but I don't know if it's necessarily good. Oh, you've got his attention. Stop it. <laughs> Because I think they're made of... They're corn-based. Corn, yeah. I need to get me a Jag GDM on the waiting list. They sold out. Yeah, luckily I jumped in when I saw they were on sale. That's what I do for all homebrew stuff. Because you cannot guarantee they won't sell out. Yeah. So you got to get it immediately. But... <laughs> push your phone oh, off again. Yeah, it's the second time. But of course, if you buy it immediately, the danger also is a bug could be in it. And and then you got the special edition with a bug. <laughs> That's right. But usually they're pretty good and they'll take it back. And But you have to ship it there and ship it back. A bit of a pain. But it's worth uh, being an early adopter. When I got cheddar, cheddar, it was even better than I expected. Yes, and it... Uh, has been out of stock for the longest time and every time I went to buy it it's like oh no, it's out of stock again uh, Time Salvo by Mike Sarna uh, who's Rev Eng awesome awesome grid based shooting game um, super fun it's for the uh, 7800 7, yeah. Yeah. and Failsafe by uh, Pac-Man Plus uh, really great, another tank game, uh, where you're going through lots and lots of towns and different areas, and you have to be s partially stealthy. Um, actually, it is a very stealth game, stealth-based game, because you have to, and there's power-ups, and you have to make sure you're not close enough to their um, enemy fire, and you have to watch your angles as well. Super great 7800 game. Um, so... Lots of fun there. Box full of fun. So we're going to move on to the next and last game. Which is Ruby Q. Now we premiered. We have the exclusive premiere of this game. And this is the exclusive final build. So ah. we're uh, bookending this. Nice. Uh, this by Silvio Mon Mogno. Uh, first posted January 4th, 2021. Who also made Rainbow Invaders. Um, you can download an older demo of this game, um, but he's going to be posting this after the show. He'll be releasing another new demo with all these updates. Oh, nice. Uh, NTSC and PAL 60. And this game was nominated for Atari 2600 Best Work in Progress Homebrew in these past awards. So let's get that queued up. And I know you have played this before. Yeah. For sure, Because yeah. I scheduled it on a day. <laughs> oh, and on Tanya Day. Mm. Uh, Tanya Day, because she loves, Ready. loves, and I mean loves Qbert. So we made sure you play it. <laughs> she does not like Qbert. She doesn't like the angle of it. <laughs> That's the problem. Um, Is this one? Yeah. There you go. This is called uh, Ruby Q. Beautiful intro. Love that too. <laughs> it's got voices and a lot more voices. Uh, so that is exciting. So. Um, also, this, uh, when somebody asked if this is going to be released... Oh, so it's this joystick for <laughs> playing, that joystick for... That is weird. ...other things. Um, what, somebody asked if this was going to be released on cartridge, and Al posted in the forums on uh, August 12th, uh, 2021. That is the plan. So this is planned to be released on cartridge. Good voices. Nice high score train. Yes, from the Atari Vox, yeah. So I've got the Atari Vox plugged in. Um, so, updates to this version of it. 
Uh, solve the graphical glitches expected in your non-TIA. Yeah, I don't see any graphical glitches anymore. Looks all good. I think one of them was in the score screen as well. Yeah, I mean, oh, you know what? I think the Quadtari thing is making it not play. No, no. Oh, oh, I, did. I, I did test it out. Oh, what is happening? Did you select two players or something? No. One second. One one thousand. Yeah. Yeah, something is weird. What's going on? Yeah, I can't none none of these. This is the one that does this. Oh, okay, there we go. Okay, so we'll do one player, classic mode, easy play. Classic graphics. Hot tubes off. Nice jump. Something is weird. Oh, no, it's certain directions. Let's reboot. Uh, it's not even certain directions. It did all of the directions, just not consistently. Atari Fox Plus. Because oh, this, is, this is the, <laughs> this is the number one joystick. Uh, let's see. Yeah, this, yeah, this is the one that you need for this. Yeah. And then it changes to plugged into this one. port three. Yeah. So this is... Okay, go for it. Oh, you know what it is? It's diagonals? No. It is diagonals. Oh, is that the thing? Oh, it's set to diagonals. But also, it's like very particular. Oh, it has to be diagonal. It can't be just up or left. It has to be up and left. Perfectly. But it's. But that's yeah. a setting. Um, is that the menu? It might be. Uh, Go change that. Easy play. No, I think it. I think it's a uh, option here. So try it again. Is that better? No. Diagonals still? It's still diagonals, which it's not the problem of it being diagonals, it's how picky it is about. Wow! The specific diagonal. Silvio, what is the setting for not diagonal? <laughs> Difficulty. Set them both to A. What's the setting for no James in front of the screen? <laughs> Try it again. No? Still diagonals? Yeah. Got them both on A. Let's try A, B. The fact that it's on this joystick is weird too. Is it? I think that changed it because I told it to go this way and he went off. Okay. Yeah. Okay. That's so no longer right difficulty. Right difficulty. Yeah, exactly. So it's right difficulty that changes it. So I've said right difficulty A to A, which is now it's better. A is diagonals, B is rotated stick. Mm. Okay, oh, well, we've got to work. Okay, now I can get back to what has changed. Oh, added a per player option to use straight joystick instead of 45 degrees. Player diff. See, that's what's going on. That's what's weird. Um, because you're playing on Joystick 2, right? And I've got it set to Joystick 2. We'll see what happens when it's two, two players. Uh, added Atari Vox and save key handling. Uh, to reset the high scores, so hold down the reset key for some seconds on the splash screen. 
Um, added a quad Tari, useful if you want two-player game, with a Tari box save key on, left joystick port, slots one and three on quad Tari. So I have the quad Tari plugged in, so we'll be able to play two players after I finish reading this. Uh, also, various bugs and glitches fixed, and other changes and improvements have been made. So, instructions. <laughs> So let's switch it to. Uh, so this will actually save. Uh oh. So you can go back. Because you haven't pressed enter. Universal well, symbol terrible. of enter. Yeah, it's a score. Gets you on the board. Still diagonal. Or is it up to normal? Yeah. Drugs. Drugs. Oh. Middle of the board. Yeah, all those starter uh, people that were below <laughs> me are terrible. <laughs> okay, uh, instructions. Different from his noble cousin, Ruby Q has a tougher life. You gonna play again? No? You wanna read the instructions? Ruby Q. Okay. Um, so we're gonna change it to classic graphics. Uh, let's do. Instructions. Differently from his noble cousin, Ruby Q has a tougher life because his blocky pyramid is full of hazards. Red balls fall from the top of the pyramid and go down randomly, hoping to hurt Ruby Q. Pink ball. Like red balls, but when it comes to the last pyramid row, it becomes snake. Snake. It's always snake. trying to catch Ruby Q. It can be defeated with a perfect time jump on a disc. Not too early because it will not be deceived and will go wait... And we'll go waiting Ruby Q on Pyramid Top. Oh, yeah. You don't want to. Oh, God. <laughs> oh, better. <laughs> but I got a little frozen. Oh. Oh, I see. Yeah. Uh, Monkey falls down from the top of Pyramid and goes down randomly clearing cubes. It can be, uh, it can be caught by Ruby Q. Flashing Plonky, only on Funky and Mad Modes. Like his brother, but changed cubes on a locked color that can only be cleared by Snake jumping on them. Oh. Yes, I remember those. Elfie Gobbly. <laughs> Elfie on, Gobbly. On third and fourth screen of each level, they jump from left to right side of Pyramid, making Ruby, Q, uh, making Ruby Q's life even worse. Icy, only on Funky and Mad, Mad Modes. Falls from top of pyramid and goes down randomly. Ice cubes. Ice cubes remain cold for a while before turning into an initial state. If Ruby Q jumps over an ice cube, he becomes cold and moves slower for a while. Yeah. Ice can be caught by Ruby Q. Yeah, but I did catch Icy, but I turned frozen as well. Oh, this one. Well, you caught him after he iced a, a, a thing, maybe. Oh, maybe, yeah. So what I do is Which kind of makes sense because clear one side and then oh god oh no I it. So oh, does that no, mean you won't get a perfect score or it's super hard yeah. super hard to get perfect on this stormy only on mad mode falls from top of pyramid and goes down randomly electrifying cubes electrified cubes remain hot for a while before turning into initial state if ruby cube jumps over an electrified cube he becomes confused and joystick control will be reversed Ah, oh, you that's can the attract worst. snake, <laughs> but you can attract snake on an electrified cube to make him confused and jumping in a random mode, possibly falling from pyramid. Discs, a way to escape from hazards, particularly from snake. Uh, but in funky mode, uh, it, sorry, they're they're a way to escape from hazards, uh, particularly snake. But in funky mode, they change one position at a time. Uh, every few seconds and in mad mode they change the position, <laughs> position randomly position change is imminent when discs start flashing teleporting cubes only in mad mode placed randomly um placed randomly on a on pyramid can be hazard or very smart escape if ruby q or oh so that's for the teleporting cubes yeah they're they're challenging if Ruby Q or any other enemy jumps on a teleporting cube, it will be teleported to on another random teleporting cube. A couple of teleporting cubes, the entering one and the exiting one, 
can be cleared only by Ruby Q. On level 1, there is only a couple of teleporting wow. cubes, but on every level, a new couple is added. Hot yeah. cubes option. I if just Ruby... noticed the snake going through one, but it didn't clear it out. So yeah, you have to clear it. That's very interesting. Oops, that was almost... Okay, need the snake. Wow! Wow! Great voices. Hot cubes. If Ruby Q stays too long on a cube, it will become hot, and after a while, he jumps away on a random other cube or off the pyramid. The only good thing that can be that can happen to Ruby Q is hitting a green ball. A limited time bonus starts so you can freely jump on cubes without hitting or being hit by an enemy. Um, but it still can fall from a pyramid. After clearing the screen, you will be rewarded with a bonus score. Depending on how fast you did the job and on how many discs uh, you left. So not using discs gives you a bonus, but I think we determined that killing the snake <laughs> is worth more than the bonus I not using it. I think so. Unless that has changed. Last time, yeah. Um. Wow. Yeah, it is very impressive. Uh, right. This is on a 2600. Oh, yeah. It The movement is so good of Qbert. Yeah, it's really good. I'm playing on easy mode. That's why I'm getting so far. In funky and mad mode, every four screens, there's a 20 seconds bonus screen with multiple plonky falling from the top. You can try catching them or go to color uh, to fill the pyramid. Where the pyramid is all black, so don't fall down. Uh, don't forget to position your CX40 joystick with fire button up. CX40, uh oh, he's in the wrong joystick. Wow. Two player, two player mode, not in demo version. You can play with a friend trying to go harder, uh, go for harder levels. Screen and end bonus score goes to who colored the last cube. Yes, I remember that. Uh, I don't like that. <laughs> Somebody could just sit in front of a cube and just wait. Uh, turbo difficulty, not demo version. If you are a video game expert, you can play the game at maximum speed. Very addicting. Graphics modes. If you don't like interlaced mode because of the flickering, you can choose classic mode with zero flicker, which is or black mode with a cube side shadowed. This mode experienced graphical glitches on the PH show. <laughs> yeah, Plus, it's it's yeah. Ah. I have to wait for oh oh the snake went on all of them. Nice. To pause, press joystick fire button to put game on pause. Pause. Press another time to resume. So if you if your cat clan. Uh, claims for food, you don't have to lose your world <laughs> Perfect. high score play. It's cat friendly. Cra yes. Cat compliant. Cat compliant. <laughs> See, you can pause during... We need to get uh, Atari to learn how to pause the game. Oh, this one's hard to... I think the key is to get the bottom area first. No, they're clearing it out. I don't know. You have to maintain the top area. Oh. An invisible one there. Yeah. See? It was very dark. Oh, wasn't was it? wasn't invisible. Super dark one. Oh. Oh, oh! now this one turns it off and on again. This one's a bit annoying. Ah. Teleporting. I like to get rid of the teleporting, because it is not in your favor to have a teleport. Wow. Because you don't know where you're going to end up. Oh. Ah, ah, no. Oh, the snake in this level. Oh, it was flashing. <laughs> oh, and you go right back to the top again. And it's annoying. We've still got some. Uh oh. Oh, it just goes. Ah, funny. It just keeps going through the teleporter. That is funny. Oh, he's chasing me. He always says that. He does, but... <laughs> I don't want him to. Oh, I've almost got it done. Ah! No! Oh, the mess. Finally! Oh my god. No ball in this kernel. Only player one, player two, zero, and play field. What is my goal? Green. Oh, he's so fast. Oh, did he go through the teleporter? That's why? 
Uh, I'm gonna get rid of all these teleporters right now. Okay, come on, come on, come on. Wow. Down goes oh. Snakey Snake. Like, I know where you're going. <laughs> okay, we're gonna play two players now. Yay, get saved. How'd I do? 34? Dun dun dun. Number one! Number one! Okay, so we can do two players. Uh, do you want just classic mode? We'll do classic mode this time. And normal play. Um, scan line. Do you want the hot cubes on or off? That's when they start to heat up when you stay on it too long. Sure. We'll keep them on. Okay. Let's make sure the joysticks are good. Is yours good? Or is it 45? I have 45 to... No, no. I mean, it's correct. Oh. It's correct? You're good? I think it's correct. Did I die? Did one of us Which die? Which color am I? You're the yellow. Oh no, mine's mine is 45. Yeah. I'll switch it. Are yours 45? No. Oh my goodness. You're controlling both of them? No, I meant Mine's on 45. So. That's weird. Something is now it's proper. Interesting. Uh, for a certain value of proper? Is yours fine? <laughs> Mine's normal. Mine's I go less this right. way and he jumps that way. <laughs> Let's see. <laughs> no. It's fine. What's your complaint? No, look. I go down. Yes. And he goes that way. Yeah. Yeah, yeah that's the normal non-45. Do you want them at angles? No, I... I prefer, well, the, the problem with the angles is that it just doesn't do it. Because it has to be precise. Yeah. And this is better. I don't know what he's saying sometimes. But... You just have to reconfigure your brain. Or... Lose a guy? I only have one. Left. Each. Zoom. Zum. Zum. Oh, was that the color you saw? Like a dark gray on that level? Oh, my gosh. I it twice. oh green. Oh, that's the green guy. Nice. Oh, that green wasn't in the other mode. I got the last one. <laughs> it, it does encourage camping, though. Um, yeah, because it's it's instant, right? There's no calculations. It's yeah. just analog. So if anybody hasn't seen that, it is fascinating. I mean, I'm, I'm sure a good portion of the people who watch YouTube um, that watch this channel are subscribed to Veritasium as well. Um, oh, yeah, that's, that's no fun. Yeah. Um, I jumped off the back of the pyramid somehow. <laughs> is there co I think there's a co-op mode, right? Uh, where we share lives or no? Oh, must have been an extra life. Yeah, well, the video was all about we are hitting our limit of digital processing based on physics <laughs> and the size of atoms. Um, which well, it was it was about how like there are certain things that the 
that analog analog just like happens quick. Welcome, Prince Phase 101 and your seven people. Welcome to the show. We are playing Well, we're dying. Oh, there we go. We are playing the Atari 2600 and we are playing brand new games for an Atari 2600, which seems bad for most people. Well, we are See, people We're are making them, them despite hundreds, how baffling it is. Hundreds a year. Oh. Uh, Atari 2600 games get put out. And we're playing a port of Qbert called Ruby Q. Oh, Prince Faze himself is here. Hello. Thank you for selecting our channel to raid. Um, oh, so we're playing an button. exclusive version. Oh, we were coding an Amiga game. Nice. I see the connection. So your uh, followers are very aware of retro gaming homebrew games. Okay, so let's play. It must be here. Classic, no. no so two players. Try two players. Just one or two. Normal play, hard play, hardest play, turbo play. Let's keep on normal. What's a co-op version? I swear Maybe there wasn't. Okay. So let's play it. We're going to be playing funky mode. There we go. So I am normal Qbert color. Darcy is yellow Qbert color. And we are co-op because we can't directly... Oh. You didn't... Oh, you lost a life, but you continued. Yeah. Uh, play black graphics. Oh, we'll reset right now. Ooh, styly. Very stylish black graphics. I like it. Yes, we are. I used to have an Atari too. Very nice. Yep. Yeah. I think a lot of people started off with a 2600 um, that were around in the 80s as a kid. Got it. it was just. Oh, did you get it? No. We both jumped at the same time. Very close. He may give priority. In this game, it's not so bad. Okay. Because, yeah? Yeah? What are you doing? What are you waiting? Oh, you're on it. But you couldn't get it. Because you appeared on it. Nobody likes you. <laughs> Nobody! <laughs> oh, I got it. This is my least favorite part of this game. <laughs> okay, oh, you defend the top. You defend the top. Yeah, I'm defending the top, but you have to defend the bottom. Oh my god, oh my god. don't hop off. <laughs> I will defend the bottom if any get past you. Oh, I have one more to go. That's how you get the full bonus. Two players. Well, you get it, I didn't. Uh, oh, damn it. That sucks. Oh, I died. <laughs> I just disappeared. <laughs> <laughs> I didn't just disappear. I went, no, no, no. It's a pretty great uh, sound effect for what has just happened. <laughs> no. <laughs> so there was uh, a Qbert put out for 2600 uh, in the 80s. Oh, God. Um, but it didn't have all the characters. It didn't have smooth um, jumping and movement. Oy oy. Oy Caught me mid-air. Um, and this is and this has lots of bonus features and bonus <laughs> levels. It is super, super awesome. Uh, but I do code 6502 for C64. Oh, then you could code for the 2600 once you wrap your head around the way it does so cool. graphics and uh, <laughs> sound. Because it does do graphics very differently than anything else. Um, and the sound is... Oh. oh, still going. But the graphics can be an advantage. Oh, oh, I want that. Oh, no! Uh -oh. Oh. <laughs> Your bottom is froze. Oh. Oh. <laughs> oh, how many lives do I have? There we go. No, not you again! The snake to clear that up. The snake can be your friend. But you have to lure him 
He's never your friend. Hello. In this case, he is, you know. He gets rid of friend. Just because he's useful doesn't make him your friend. True. He's just useful. He's just... He's still oh. a bully. In ball form, he doesn't clear it out. Damn it! He doesn't do the graphics very differently from Pong. No, it's uh, meant to play kind of Pong. ish Games at the beginning with... Uh, Two players, a ball, and some play field. And two missiles as well. So it can do tank or combat. Oh, beat my old score. Well, with the bone oh, I didn't get top. Pong and combat. That was pretty those are the pretty much the two games the twenty six hundred was made for. That's why it has like the two characters mm -hmm. and a ball, a ball for the pawn. Yeah, yeah. And the combat was like, oh, draw a play field, like a little square so they can drive around in it. And each guy is a missile. And that's all it has. A ball, two missiles, two characters, and a play field. But people have exploited it <laughs> to the nth yeah, degree yeah. now of what you can do because each line is separately drawn on a 2600. And you can use all of those elements on each line to a degree because yeah. <laughs> you run out of time. Yeah. But people have found ways to speed up the amount of processing they can do. Right, right. But every line it resets. So it's not like a sprite on other systems where a sprite height is eight. And that's it all you get. Where it is. Yeah, yeah. On this, a sprite goes all the way down the screen. You can just, if you don't turn it off, it just keeps drawing in the same place. And then you can change color per line. Um, and it this has amazing colors. Amazing colors. Yeah. It was like, look at the Ruby Q at the top. <laughs> it has Ruby it had the Q. most advanced colors Q. for the longest time. It has yeah. 128. And it has hues, like it has hues of colors, and also um, not intensity. What word am I looking for? Brightness. There's another word, though. So you have red, and then you have all the different reds. You have green, all the different greens. So it has beautiful, amazing colors. So those two things, those per-line drawings and the colors, means you can make so many, so many games that you just can't make on systems that even came out after this system. Yeah, yeah. Like you look at um, some of the Champ Games stuff, like Robotron. It's just so many things on the screen. And... Uh, Galagon as well. That's hard to do on a lot of systems. Okay. Let's do Mad Mode. Two players. Has no screen buffer. Yeah, it doesn't have to store anything. Uh, the only storage it has is that line. Yeah. And not even that line. For Playfield, it only has half the line. It can only store half of it. And then you have to change it for the other half or reflect it or repeat it. Yep. It's it's a challenge. So this one has warps in this version, and it has that guy in there that you don't want to run into that uh, electric guy because uh, we're stuck. You have to get the snake to clear it out. I only cleared one. You have to get him to clear those two. Oh god. Okay. He did it. Ah. Oh, he didn't. He... he didn't land on that one. He changed on that one. Oh, god damn it. <laughs> okay, Mr. Snakey. Go down right to the bottom. Okay. Follow me down here. Follow. No, not so close. Uh, get him down to the bottom. This is like the worst spot for a thing that the snake needs to change back. <laughs> no. I think what it is is the spring. If you hit it, it goes the other way. If you if you pull it to one side and let go, oh, it goes far enough the other way for it to move. I think that might Ooh. be what's happening. Is that my down. hand goes? Oh. <laughs> oh my god! This is uh, poor. <laughs> Just because of where that was placed. Oh. Never 
never go in those corners. Okay, let's do that again and do it better. Next one. Oh, there we go. Yeah, I was watching somebody... Oh, it was Ben Hatch repairing a, chair, uh, a Fairchild Channel F. And it oh. had 2K of video memory. Which was an enormous amount of memory for video in 1976. can't remember what the retail price of a, of a Channel F was. Um, but it was very, very slow memory to completely fill it up. Well, you took him out. <laughs> the number of times that I've uh, jumped off the edge. Oh, this happened a lot today, that's what I'm saying. <laughs> yes. And you've run into the snake a lot. Having a screen buffer is advantageous, but it's also not great. Oh, who took him out? Mm. Both trying to jump at the exact same time on him. Okay, I'll do the bottom. Keep the top clear. Oh, oh, what is this failure? any points, so you're the one who's stealing all the points. What I could have done is waited. There we got rid of him. And you could have... Oh, get that guy! Get him! Get him! Get him! Get him! Ah! Damn it. Oh, you bastard. Don't touch that guy. Just for snake. Wow. Die, snake! Die! Kill him. Or don't die on him. <laughs> he has to clear off those things. Oh, I went. Somehow I went. I. I don't know how. I'm going the wrong way. Oh my god. Okay, Snakey. Come over here. Down, down, down. Thank you. That doesn't help. <laughs> <laughs> I have to lure him all the way to the top. Points. Because uh, you Did weren't you paying bonus? attention, and uh, so I was getting, I was getting the end of round bonuses. Oh uh, no, I was not paying attention to that. Oh, I'm so slow. I do have to say I don't like. Wow. That. It should be shared. It should be something different. It shouldn't <laughs> be all to one person. Eh? Like shared would be unobjectionable. <laughs> or based on how many the best would be based on percentage of squares you did or something uh, like like shared out not shared but like a word based on the squares yeah. it, it adds a bit of cutthroatery to it it does but <laughs> that's a word oh god I have decided that I don't like it <laughs> <laughs> I do not like it I declare but uh, but it's a tiny thing like oh you know it's like in the two player thing and I mean, and I I see that people might prefer that, and so my opinion on it is hardly important. <laughs> Too slow. People are really quiet in the chat today. Lots of people watching, but they're just enthralled by our playing. <laughs> <laughs> they're like, how did it get so bad? <laughs> I mean, we expect it from James, but what's, what's wrong with our <laughs> Come here! Oh, you bad ball. Oh, come on. Clear it out. Clear it out. Any more? Yeah, oh, there's one more. more. Oh, that guy! And the snake disappeared. Why did the snake disappear? Because the, when you die, all the things disappear. Oh, yeah, that makes sense. Otherwise, you'll be put in a very... Oh, another guy came through so at some point. Oh, oh no! Oh, no. Oh, man. <laughs> 
<laughs> you just beat me by <laughs> 200 <laughs> <laughs> I mean, not that you didn't deserve it, but it would have been funnier if you had that lost by been. a point. And you, like, so. died eons ago. It was eons ago. <laughs> okay. Put in your sad, pathetic score that I just barely beat. <laughs> it is a sad and pathetic score. Oh, let's score. play Turbo Speed. Thank you, Solo. We do want to show off all the different versions. Normally, chat takes precedence over work for me today, but it's distracting from me. Oh, that is true. It is during the work day. I didn't think about that. So we don't have, we only do this like once every two weeks, right? So, and usually we do it at night. So I'm going to do one player, or do you want to play? We'll play two. Uh, let's play classic, but turbo. Just so we can. Okay, you ready? This is super I'm crazy. Gonna die right away. <laughs> it's crazy! Ah! Ah! I get the green ball. Oh, what happened? Uh, it's uh, turbo mode. Ah. <laughs> Anybody got a, a timer? <laughs> How fast we'll die on us? Oh, uh, I'm dead. <laughs> I've lost all of my lives already. <laughs> because I was spending time trying to figure out if I had the controller turned in the right direction. <laughs> I kept dying. Oh, the top is deadly. Like, it's just... Like... It's just constant... Boop, 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 boop. <laughs> it's, raining. it's just raining balls at the top. Okay. This let's... is awesome that this mode exists. Yeah. Yeah. I think there always should be a mode in a game where... Oh, you think you're tough? You think you're good at this yeah, game? Yeah, yeah, yeah. Here. Have turbo mode. Yeah. Okay, let's play it again. Quick, get the top. Get the top. <laughs> there. Not to the top. Oh, actually, the top is safe. Yeah. Okay, clear. I'll save you. <laughs> from, Too late. From dying. No, you made it. No, I fell off. Death and mode. You, oh, you, I fell off, and a moment later, you... Uh, uh, close. <laughs> oh, there's... People like clearing things out. Oh god! There's like things. <laughs> oh my god! Okay, let me try that. It doesn't matter if I play it myself. It's actually help helpful. One more. One more in turbo. Oh no! I jumped too fast. I got scared. I got a scared. Ran. No! No! <laughs> Run! I'm alive! Run away! You just, oh, good. You might actually do it. Make level two. I just, I just touched the green ball and jumped through the snake. Get the top. It's up to you, guys. Oh, we'll definitely win then. You can do it! What? <laughs> Off the edge. Got one more life. Oh no, he's waiting for you. He's no. jumping. No. He's like, hey. I'm gonna get him off. <laughs> he's so excited. <laughs> so excited. Ah. <laughs> uh, uh, what? You're still playing? <laughs> no. Apparently <laughs> not. Ah. Uh, Awesome. Too much fun. Uh, super awesome game. Um, here in the background. Um, <laughs> super awesome game, Ruby Q. Uh, Silvio will be releasing that into the forums right now-ish or soon-ish if he's got it ready for submit. To hit submit. Uh, you're five starting out strong. Oh, yeah. Some good stuff. Um, so let's check out what's happening in the rest of year five. Well, at least next couple of weeks. Uh, let's get our schedule up here. Boom. Um, so we played Raptor today and Ruby Q. Uh, next episode on Tuesday, we're going to be playing uh, 7iX, which is kicks on the 7800 we have an exclusive work in progress update a lot of things have progressed since the last time uh, we played it 
And we're going to be going through all the games that were made. Uh, ports of, what is that called? Wordle? Is it, is it Wordle? Oh, Wordle. Yeah. Yep. There were three, since we've been off the air, made. Two for the 2600 and one for the 7800. Wow. And they're all great. So we have Word Guess, 2600 Words, and Wordle. What about uh, Nerdle? Has anybody done Nerdle for the 2600? That's on you. You can go for it. Make Nerdle. <laughs> <laughs> uh, oh, thanks, Silvio, for hanging out in the chat, answering people's questions. And thank you so much for making RubyQ. Uh, are you going to yeah, post great. it before you go to bed? Mm. Will RubyQ run in the plus cart? I don't think it does. I think it uses something special. He can answer that. I can't remember right now. Um, and Lyra the Tenrec. Uh, we have the exclusive final build of Alien Exterminator next Friday. Uh, Huey's Party and exclusive work in progress update of Grizzards. Uh, the episode after that, we're going to be playing through all three final versions of Zark Stars. One, two, and three, because two is on pre-order right now. Ah. And we played three a long time ago. We played one a little while ago. So, oh, are they ports? They're ports. Uh, Zark they're ports? Stars? Yes. No, they're not ports. So they two is original. just, so they made one and three, and now they're making two? They made three first, ah, then one, okay. and then two. Okay, okay. All out of order. I love it. Uh, it's, it's perfect. <laughs> I love that. Why not? <laughs> um, and then uh, we've got some scatterings of things. We're going to be playing Game of the Bear, Too Much to Bear, a sequel oh, to Game of the Bear. Wow. Looks awesome. Uh, Dragon's Havoc, Adventures of Ollie Troll. Actually, that's that's an exclusive because that was only on cartridge. There's no binary. Um, so the a developer has uh, let, me, let us play that. So that'll be a lot of fun. Oh, what day is... Oh, yeah, you're going to be playing Game of the Bear. That's your day. Woohoo! uh robots rumble final updated binary will be playing uh oh we have exclusive final binary of space pac-man uh ah. uh, march 25th uh super fun that is they've shown off the boxes already i think maybe not well, i've seen the boxes anyway you're very welcome thomas always great to do an early show for you you always have to look at Darcy. I know. Eh, it's, eh. You, it's a get it's a what you get you show. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> um, it's a bonus. Don't complain about Darcy. Not that they do. <laughs> uh, we'll also be playing 1942. They're very well behaved. Yes, they are. <laughs> <laughs> they don't say all of the things that could be said. I wondered how to make Nerdle for the 2600. Uh, I wonder what kind of twist you can put on that. Uh, oh, Danny, you see, I'll be announcing it. Harmon the Harmony Games on the 12th. Games start on the 14th, so those are based on the Atari Homebrew Awards. Uh, Danny VC runs that every year. The winners, uh, he runs high score contest for. So we'll be probably playing through those. We'll see. We'll see when, the, when those fall. Uh, oh, and we have an exclusive world premiere of Razor's Edge. Uh, that is the same developer as Keijo Chases a Cheese. This will be his second game. I know nothing about it right now other than the name. So we have the exclusive world premiere. Oh, Nerdle. It is a game. A Wordle with equations. Did you just made up Nerdle? Or are you new in about it? No, Nerdle? no, no. It's, Nerdle is the numbers version of Wordle. Oh. And I do that one on I haven't, every day. Yeah, I, I heard about that, but I sure. haven't looked into how it plays. How do you play it? It's just a, it's simple math equations. Okay. Multi like, yeah, just a, there's six Eight spaces, I think. And it's the same? Like, you guess numbers? Nine spaces, I guess. And You guess numbers, and they have to make an equation. And there's plus, okay. minus, uh, multiply, and divide. And then equal sign, yeah. So it has... And like, the all equals the... doesn't have any math on the other side. It's just equals. So does it give you the solution? It to... gives you nothing. You try to figure out what all the things are. Oh, so equals is already there. No, the equals blank. nothing's there. It's blank. The equals could be in various places, and you have to you have to find it all that all information. Of it. Okay, okay. So it could be like for a simple one, one plus one equals two, and that would be a but it, thing. But it's because there's more. It wouldn't be that, but yeah. yes, yeah, a yeah. simple version. X plus X equals Y. Right. X plus N equals Y. <laughs> X plus Y equals N. X plus X. Well, that makes sense. A plus B equals C. There we go. <laughs> there you go. I thought you were flowing out variations of the Wordle name, too. That's what I thought at first, but then I, I remembered that is actually... Oh, great socks. 
Very colorful. Did yes. people see those socks? I don't think put so. Put them in the web. Put them in the cat cam. Oh my. Look at those colorful socks. Wait, 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 wait. Oh, colorful. Um, <laughs> and those are all the games we have scheduled. We have some other ones that we're going to be doing in the future. Um, Atari Age Day 2022. Oh, oh, not that room. Come on. It's room now. Um, Dark Keep as well, uh, which is based on a board game. Just thrust, to be clear, Wordle is Wordle for nerds, too. <laughs> it's yeah. just different nerds. Mm -hmm. <laughs> Sorry, you were saying it. I interrupted you. <laughs> um, we have Dark Keep, which is uh, based on a board game. It had a big tower in the center. I've never played it. I'd never heard of it before um, developers started ta uh, making it. Um, so that will be cool. We don't know when that is. They're still working on it, but we will bring that to you. Uh, ZPH the game. I still have to do some work on that to make sure that can get released. Um, so we can give away a bunch of copies. And Tanya's going to make some special bonus items. Um, and actually, uh, the winners of the Atari Homebrew Awards are going to get some special little item trinkets as well in their stockings ah, in their box their with box. the with their awards that, that come with them um so keep looking out i haven't sent them off yet because she's still finishing them up so as soon as she's finished them up they'll it's go tanya's fault yeah it's all tanya's fault she's gonna do it this weekend she says so we'll sending it out next week but you the winners will get notifications through uh, messages um and we're gonna be doing uh atari 2645th birthday marathon uh we'll play, be playing through every Atari 2600 game. Not all the... There's some crappy ones we won't be playing. Um, there's about 400 uh, base... The base level uh, 2600 games, I think. Um, so we'll be playing all the major uh, development houses. Atari Activision, 20th Century Fox, etc. Parker Brothers, Epix, all the good ones. Uh, we probably be doing those on After Darks because... It would completely destroy <laughs> any chance of me playing any homebrews because <laughs> there's so many it would just take up so much. Mm -hmm. So I'll be doing that around September time because that's when the 2600 was released. It was on September 11th, 1977. So it'll be the 45th anniversary. Firefly! We have to play Firefly. It's terrible. Um, <laughs> the inappropriate ones too. Most likely, we'll be playing the inappropriate ones. Inappropriate one, Do Mystique. I need to know? Mystique. It's not on the list, but we'll see. We'll probably play them because they're terrible and inappropriate. Um, Why are they inappropriate? Do you mean there's they're, boobs in it? Yes. Oh, okay. There's adult content. In oh, it. okay. I guess. Plus, worse. Much, much worse. Much worse. Yeah, yeah. It's much worse. <laughs> <laughs> much, much worse. <laughs> um. We'll see. We'll see. I'll see if I'm I... not going to name things for you. Tandy didn't freak out and run out of the room when I mentioned that we might be playing these games. <laughs> so we might be playing these games. Uh, we'll be doing it in order of year, like date released. So we'll be starting with the simple ones, like the pack in games of combat, um, going right up to 1992. Um, so that'll be a lot of fun seeing how games progressed and how technology progressed um, and developers got better and better. Um, so there's the cat. Let's go to the main screen. So thank you everybody for tuning in to our triumphant return to the airwaves, to the internet waves. Inter the interwaves. <laughs> the interwaves. That's even better. Um, seeing a cat under an office chair may cause me anxiety. <laughs> anxiety. Oh, oh, I'm moving the chair. He's very he, springy. He's like, oh, yeah. Well, we're not sitting in the chair, so it's okay. That will be a bad show with so many stinkers. Have you figured no, out how many games? No, you just play them long enough just to oh. talk crap about them and then turn them off. Yeah. And then it will be entertaining. It's like five minutes max, but yeah. I haven't figured out how many games and how many episodes I want to do them. Five minutes max. Max. So some of them could be like, turn it on. Oh my God. Ah! No. Turn it no, off. No, we, we will play it for that length of time. But I don't know if it's five minutes or four or three. Uh. Because when we did one show where we had to power through a bunch of games, like there was the 10 liner games and there was like 30 of them. I think we did three minutes. So most likely it'll be three minutes again. 
Um, you should do an MST3K format for all the terrible games. Yeah. I mean, I'm only doing this because it's the 45th anniversary of the 70, uh, 2600. Um, it's a homebrew show. Yeah, yeah. And that's why we're also doing it in After, After Dark. Dark yeah. For some three minutes is too long. <laughs> yeah. And some of them, I, I won't have played them before, so I have no idea how to play them. Um, I'll try and look up as many as I haven't played before beforehand. There's also some that we will not be able to play properly, like Space Shuttle which requires an overlay on the 2600 itself for all the controls. It uses all the controls for the, and you can't for the space shuttle. Out. I could. Yeah, you I'll could. do it. It doesn't seem like... That doesn't seem beyond this, the lengths is, that you would go to to do <laughs> a thing. Would. But <laughs> the learning curve on that is so brutal. Like three minutes, you probably wouldn't even take off in three minutes. Oh, sure. So yeah. your space shuttle needs an hour or so. Yeah. Take more time to navigate the harmony. That just means it'll up. be safer. Oh, the timer. You, you don't have enough time to take off, so nobody has to die today. <laughs> That's true. Uh, navigate the harmony menu. So that'll be built in. So it might be four minutes. We'll see how it how it works. And we could adjust it like for the second episode. It will be a fun show with many stinkers. Um, I mean, the first run is all going to be Atari games until Activision makes their first third party game. And I don't. Is that in 1980, I think? So it'll be like three years of Atari games before we get to <laughs> Activision. <laughs> plus cart, maybe, if it exists quickly on most games. Oh, yeah, you could, we could use the plus cart. Um, because plus cart has a reset. I don't think it's going to be that much faster. But we don't have to get up to do it. Oh, we still have to because you have to press reset and then to the right or something. Eh. Meh. We'll use the normal cart. Plus, I can arrange them much easier on that. How many things plug directly into the Atari? Uh, like, what well, do you could, mean? Did we put it here and just run the cable over there? <laughs> As it's meant to be? <laughs> <laughs> oh. You know what? For that, I might put a table here. Mm -hmm. That'll be a lot faster. Yeah. Because then we can get through them faster. Or we could just get a stick. And, uh, uh like, like screw the atari down to the table over there and then we get a stick long and go, stick eh, or a lasso <laughs> <laughs> yeah um or just have a string attached to it audio uh power that would be the best <laughs> atari would go nuts on the atari with all those strings bouncing around <laughs> you need some sticks for the ones that go up and down you need sticks but for the ones with springs you only need a string play them ordered by controllers um that's like if i don't have exact dates it's like oh this came out in 1977 yeah. i could put all the uh paddle games together you could use both the 2600 and 7800 while playing one prepare the other that's interesting um because 7800 can play the 2600 games yeah ah. uh not all of them the later ones it has some trouble with depending on factors um, but I still have to would have to use my retro tink to change options and also the button on my switcher to switch to the 7800. So it really wouldn't save much time. And somebody would have to be playing and the other person. Yeah, yeah. Actually, somebody can get up because one only one person's playing. Mm -hmm. So when the timer goes up, the opposite person goes. Yeah, it, a thing longer. Yes. You know what that's from? It's from, um, no, the name escapes me, uh, Matt Groening's uh, um, show in space. Oh, Futurama? Futurama, mm. yes, the, the scientist guy. Uh, too slow, RC-70, he got it. It does take longer to type. Than it, <laughs> it does. <laughs> it does. Move. And he has the delay, so he actually probably beat you. No, he didn't. I won. I'm just <laughs> saying that I cheated. In his world... With time dilation, he won because he received it after you said it. There are more people living in our time <laughs> slice than in his time slice. <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> Atari heard it first out of Darcy's mouth. <laughs> uh, yeah. Okay. I think we're done. Did I open up everything? Yep. Okay. So we'll be, we'll have stories of Maui on Tuesday with uh, Tanya. 
Um, the only story I briefly said was I lost my tablet only because somebody brought it up. Because I usually have this big tablet here. Or eight inch tablet. I, lo I lost in my world actually right before I hit enter, but my finger was too long to stop. Because <laughs> he was using his finger longer. He was using his <laughs> so thanks for tuning in. RC7E Vitoko Thrust 26 Carl G. Uh, Charles Whelan, uh, um, uh, Silvio uh, Magno, thank you for letting us play Ruby Q. I can't wait till that's released on in box. I bet the cover art is going to be super, super awesome. Whoever you get to do it, uh, Phil San 69, uh, Mike Latow, Trey Guy, Prince Phase 101, thank you for rating us. And bring over your uh, watchers, your followers. Who else? Smitty B. Who else? Who else? John Q. Atari. Um, Atari 2600 dude was watching. The D Train was watching. Splendid Nut. And I think that's it. And also to Armscar Coder. Um, whose name I always have to look up their name because I never refer to them by their real name too much uh, Andrew Polly for doing the interview about his awesome new game Raptor which is promised to be out tomorrow and you get a new demo of Ruby Q now-ish maybe he posts it or at least tomorrow maybe soonish so you get two new games Woo! awesome and uh, so we'll be back on Tuesday uh, 6 p.m. normal, normalish, late time, with uh, more games. What are we playing? We're playing uh, 7IX exclusive work in progress update. So that'll be a lot of fun. So thanks for tuning out, tuning in. And now we're tuning out, <laughs> and we will see you on Tuesday. Seven in hmm? right? Does that mean a word if seven is a different seven language? Seven IX. I know local indigenous languages use seven. Um, but I don't know how to pronounce it. It may work, but I'm not sure why seven was chosen. I'll have to research that for the show, next show. Um, so we'll see you next Tuesday. Oops. <laughs> you know what that means? Don't. See you ah. next Tuesday. <laughs> I'll have you to say that it. only because I saw the see you. <laughs> it's Thrust's fault. It's also true and fair. I'll have to say that from now on every Friday. You didn't say you were a CU next Tuesday. <laughs> no. I'll just say see you next Tuesday. Uh, see you on Tuesday. There's no comment on that at all. No. I don't know what that means. What do you, We don't know what... No. Yeah. No. Um, <laughs> uh, see you on Tuesday. Thanks for tuning in. Uh, oh, I was tempted to set the NT. <laughs> too low brow for this show. It's not too low it's brow. Nothing's too low. We well, some things there. are probably too low brow, but some, that wasn't. That wasn't. We went there. And now we're leaving. It was mid-row. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. Okay, bye-bye. See ya.